and welcome everybody to the run dot down i'm your host shwinnie poo and i'm here with constantine metricos khan how are you doing doing great after that that belt to ass uh whooping that i just saw <laughs> yeah the knicks uh they defeated the dastardly celtics uh 118 109 a game that honestly was not it, the the final score is not indicative of how much of a beatdown this was. Knicks yeah. were up thirty one at one point um, in the fourth quarter, and Boston was uh, that Boston second half was disgusting. How hard they were trying for no reason, um, <laughs> but whatever. It doesn't matter. Knicks get the win. Jalen Brunson thirty nine points uh, didn't have to play in the fourth quarter at all. Um, he was fantastic. Literally, I mean, he looked like the best player on the floor. Uh, we're going to talk about that and a lot more, but before we do that, I do have to announce that, uh, one second, once I, uh, I have to unfortunately open the correct bet online copy here. All right, here we are. Bet online is your number one source for all your summer sports this season from MLB golf, NBA, and NHL playoff stats, all the latest stats, news, and scores available to follow your favorite teams. Get the latest odds and lines, including the latest team matchups, player props, and odds on just about every sport out there. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to get in on the action. Bet online where the game starts. Um, all right. So, yeah, the Knicks absolutely beat the brakes off the Celtics in this game. Um, and I, I know at halftime they were talking about, you know, the Celtics didn't really, they weren't trying as hard and blah, blah, blah. And I, I mean, I'm I'm sure there was there's some level of truth to that. Uh, they don't really have anything to play for. I understand that, but they did activate all of their players today, all of the starters. Uh, they were available, healthy. They started their normal starting lineup, um, and to my eye, it looked like they were trying. Now, did they play with the same level of desperation and urgency that the Knicks did? No, of course not. Um, but they were definitely trying. They were definitely trying. You can't tell me they weren't trying when Jalen Brown and Drew Holiday were full court pressing Jalen Brunson throughout the third quarter. I don't want to hear about that shit. Get the fuck out of here with that. Um, so the Knicks just took them to the woodshed and Jalen Brunson. Look, if if you needed to see why uh, I believe and many Knicks fans and mo most Knicks, not many, I would assume every Knicks fan uh, believe that Jalen Brunson is far more deserving of a first team all NBA berth than Jason Tatum. Um, it was on full display tonight. Not only did he outplay Tatum head, head to head. Um, I mean, the Knicks got absolutely fucking hammered in the minutes that he didn't play tonight or that, that he was off the floor tonight. Um, they cannot function offensively without him and their defense is arguably not. I mean, I, I thought he played a really good defensive game today. He absolutely stonewalled Jalen Brown uh, on one, on one possession. He drew three charges. Uh, obviously I'm not suggesting Jalen Brunson is some lockdown defender, but if he's your worst defender, you can do much worse than that. And many teams do, uh, he was fantastic. He was the best player on the floor. He was the only player on the floor that looked like a first team all NBA guy. Um, and you know, what else can you say? Josh Hart, uh, he came out like a fucking, I mean, he was insane to start the game. His energy, uh, he, he like spawned with eight points and five rebounds today. It was ridiculous. <laughs> I came out. I already had eight points, five rebounds. Uh, he was fantastic. Isaiah Hartenstein, fantastic. Um, yeah, I mean, OG and OB, not really like some massive game, but again, you just see the impact he has when he's on the floor. Plus uh, 20, plus 20 yeah. box score. Again, uh, the, the plus minus God. And yeah, I mean, this, this was a thorough beatdown. And, you know, again, I, do I believe that the Celtics played with the same urgency that the, the Knicks did? No, I don't. But they were definitely competing and the Knicks beat the shit out of them uh, on their floor. And uh, you know, the Knicks are now, they more or less control their own destiny as far as uh, what seeding they're going to get up to, up to three. Uh, the second seed is still that, that is all dependent on what the bucks do. It looks like Dame might not play tomorrow against Orlando. So um, we'll see, but the Knicks basically clinch the three seed at minimum with one more win. Um, actually, I guess they can still, they could theoretically still no that. Yeah. They basically clinched the, the, the three seed with one more win. Um, whatever. It doesn't really matter. They're in a great position. They should secure home court again this year. Uh, the bulls won today. So it's very likely they don't play anybody against the Knicks on Sunday, by the way, they flex that into a national TV spot. That game is going to be so bad. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, what, what were you, I mean, I've been talking here for a little bit, Con, but what did what did you think of uh, of tonight's game? Um, just first off, we do secure the the three seed with one more win because the only team that can catch us 
in the win loss column is Cleveland, and we have a tiebreaker over them. So one more win gets it done for us to get to the three seed. Um, obviously, you'd avoid Philly if they stay in the plan or the Heat, or whatever you know, whoever comes out of that and whoever they seed up. But um, I there's just nobody on this planet who could guard Jalen Brunson right now, man. Like this is ludicrous what we're watching every night, and for for the for the Nick fan. To be watching a guy like him every night, it's just one of those things where for two decades of my life, I'm 22 years old, right? But for two decades of my life and for many other people, a much longer time than that, we have been yearning for a guy who is a superstar, born for this, like Mike Breen said, wants the challenge and is just willing to do everything, be a leader, play hard defense, give up his touches when he needs to carry the, every single bit of the offensive load when he needs to. That's all Jalen Brunson does, man. I, I don't have any superlatives, adjectives, anything to describe that guy. He's ridiculous. He is ridiculous. And I hope everybody, I know we are all enjoying and appreciating what we're watching, but I want to drive that home, man. This guy is not normal. He is not normal at all. Um, Going off of the Jalen Brunson thing, because there's a lot more to talk about this game. As far as a potential Boston matchup in the playoffs, um, I still am very concerned about how we're going to guard their fives um, in pick and pop and all that stuff on the perimeter. Porzingis now, um, in each game he's played us, he's hit three or more threes, which is I'm not, like a big problem. I don't care how confident you are in Hart and Mitch. I, I love those two guys, but it's, it's going to be a big issue. And... You saw at the end, I don't want to put too much stock into that, but like when Jalen Brunson's off the court, they were getting pressed by backups and it didn't look great. So I don't want to take too many things away, but the, the two major things are how do we survive with Brunson? That's been what we talk about for the last, what, three weeks? Right. And, Basically uh, since fucking Randall went down. Yeah. And honestly, even before that, it was kind of like, especially, you know, after they trade quick, you could really see like that when Brunson sat, they really lost. Like yeah. all their offensive rhythm. And then um how how we're gonna guard, you know, those pick and rolls with KP at the five and even those lineups with like Horford at the four as well, when when they're gonna have that much size out there. So that's the interesting part. That's the part that, you know, Tibbs and Co are gonna have to figure out. But I'll be interested to see how everything plays out. Um yeah, uh, look, the, the Jalen Brunson thing, uh, what we're witnessing from this guy is, I, I mean, kind of at a loss of words um, at this point because we probably said everything that we could possibly say about him. But um, you you watch this guy play now, and it's like a, it's like a fucking privilege to watch him play. Yep. Uh, the level he's he's playing at. I mean, look, he, he was fantastic last year, but, you know, he, he's in total command right now. He – understands every coverage how to play it where his reads are um how to get open off the ball his movement off the ball i mean he he had a sequence today with him and i heart where they had a nice little give and go he back cut got an easy layup out of it like it's just it's constant movement now and um it's again it's a pleasure to watch he just has a feel and a command for the game that is special and he's playing with a confidence that um you know Every NBA player believe, thinks that they're, you know, Michael Jordan, basically. But it's one thing to think it, and it's one thing to have the confidence to play like it, and then to actually have the confidence of your coach and your teammates. Uh, and he clearly has all of that. Um, and, you know, um, I don't want to say too much, but um, I, I feel comfortable saying this, that uh, he is the franchise player. Um, he is the the guy and he is the Knicks first true franchise player since Patrick Ewing as far as I'm concerned um I think he he fits the bill of everything you could ever want from a franchise player on court ability the way he carries himself how he handles the media uh the way he elevates his teammates the way that basically since he's come in it feels like we have the best culture in the fucking league um you know everybody playing for each other guys being selfless sacrificing for the team um and and then just the sheer toughness both physically and mentally um 
he he has all of it. He is the real deal. He's a complete package. You were talking about a six one guard who is fourth in the NBA in scoring, has scored thirty five plus now, I believe, in six games. Really should have had forty tonight. He would have had forty tonight if the game mattered in the fourth quarter at all. Um, he's on a tear and he does it in every way. If he doesn't have a three ball going, he can kill you inside the arc. He's got a mid range game. He's got his floater touch is unbelievable at this point. His finish around the rim is unbelievable. He's even started flashing more finishes with his right hand, um, off balance stuff, off balance runners, floaters, everything, you know, I mean, it's literally like that fucking, uh, it's like that fucking ball. Don't stop. Uh, <laughs> but, right, like, you know, your one dribble pull up, but he really yep. He all that who passing. Are, who you are at the elbow? Who you are on the block? That passing <laughs> really to, to a pure hoop like this. <laughs> but it, it and it and it and it does. And and uh, I honestly like his passing has fucking leveled up too. It's it's crazy. It's not even just the assist. I mean, there's so many times he's getting trapped. He throws a slip to Hartenstein. I mean, there's one today in the in the third quarter. Throws to Hartenstein. Hartenstein has an easy lob for OG. Um, and and it's you know all these guys take their cues from him because. When you see how hard Brunson plays, you see what he plays through, um, and you see him sacrificing his body on defense in ways, you know, that Jalen Brunson, again, he's never going to be the best defender because he just can't. You know, that's just the physical limitations of what he has. But he gives you what he's got, and when you see a guy sacrifice their body the way he does defensively, um, it you, you don't have excuses. No, none of these guys can make excuses. There are no excuses any night with this team, and – he is the reason for that. And so is Tom Thibodeau, who's doing a fantastic job. The way that this offense has shifted um, throughout the season is unbelievable. He's basically had to coach three separate versions of this team. He has had to do it on the fly. He's had to deal with crazy amounts of injuries. And like we just mentioned, they're one win away from being the three seed in the conference. And I understand the Eastern Conference has not been as great, and there have been injuries all over the place for not just the Knicks, right? Uh, we know Cleveland's had to deal with a lot of injuries. Philly obviously has deal, dealt with a lot of injuries. Miami. But – the Knicks have managed to seemingly at this point pull ahead of those guys of those teams. And they have done it after losing an all NBA foul forward like Julius Randle. And you know, we can sit here and talk about whether or not, you know, are the Knicks better with him, without him, whatever. Like I, I'm not particularly interested in that conversation. Um, and I do think like, yes, maybe you can argue that the minutes, the way we're playing when Brunson's on the floor, can't really play that way with Julius Randle. But I'll tell you what, uh, the minutes when Brunson's not on the floor. I I pray, uh, I wish I could give my shoulder, my very weak shoulder, uh, to Julius Randle. But, like, you know, I, and, and I also think it's worth mentioning, yeah, the way we're playing right now is awesome. And obviously that starting group and, and how they've kind of shifted and playing a different way, it's, it's beautiful to watch. Um, but let's not forget that, like, when Julius was last on the floor, um, this team was kicking everybody's ass. They were dominant. So, um, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not really interested in debating are we better or worse without, with or without Julius or whatever. But like, um, I think it's important to recognize that we were awesome both ways, and that's really a credit to an organization that's like aligned top down. So you give credit to Leon Rose, you give credit to Tibbs, you give credit to the players. Um, all these guys are are doing a phenomenal job. Um, so yeah, it's pretty great to watch. And you know, look, we've literally had to watch uh you know i always talk about this but like you know play, people like you con your age uh like the like the your ability to be a Knicks fan is always amazing to me because i'm like man you like got one good season uh for the last 17 18 years basically um but you know this is like why you're a fan right and why anybody is a fan of any sports team is you're always hoping like yeah it's gonna get better though one day um well one day is here one day is here, and Jalen Brunson um, is the uh, shining light of what I think will be maybe the Knicks' best era ever, potentially. They have a chance. So it's definitely – it can be in the conversation. Yeah. Uh, definitely yeah. the best one since the 70s. It's it, – it's, it, it, like where they are now, having a player of this caliber at his age, this is a guy that you, you can have the type of success the Knicks had in the 90s, and obviously, hopefully – a little bit more just one more win one more win would be nice that uh that one day that you talked about one day will will be better one day we'll have that guy that one day is july 12th 2022 man that day that day is going to be looked back on as one of the most impactful days in nba history not just nick's history 
NBA history. I truly believe that because we know the dialogue when the Knicks are good, when the Knicks are great, when the Knicks are elite, and how that changes everything, how how we really shift the landscape of the league. That day, July 12, 2022, is going to be a day that's looked back on and, and like – the league wasn't the same after that after that day. I'm so convinced of that because that day led to the rise of everything with the Knicks right now. From getting Randall back on track to I don't I don't know if people are necessarily gonna think of this the way that I think of it, but I firmly believe that Jalen Brunson helped Quick with a lot of his development. And then from there we were able to turn Quick and RJ into OG. That same day, I believe, was when we signed Hartenstein because um, that was a day one of free agency contract as well from Leon Rose. So just all that stuff, the the butterfly effect that it's all had, I mean, there's there's no doubt in my mind that it's at least going to be the most successful day in the history of this franchise. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, but, yeah, there's it's – Look, it's. I mean, Chuck has said this, and I. I don't. Know, I, I don't. I don't. I know that I've seen a lot of comments about what they said. I want. I want everybody knows. I never watch the TN. Like when the Knicks. Are, I love watching them when the Knicks aren't on, because then I can take their like basically their shit posting <laughs> version of in game and or studio commentary and enjoy it. Uh, but when on live television, it's amazing. Uh, but when when they are doing anything Knicks related, I immediately check out because I know they're gonna have a stupid conversation. Um, but. Um, you know, Chuck has actually said multiple times, like, you know, the Brunson signing is like one of the all time biggest moves in NBA history. Do I think that's a little bit hyperbolic? Maybe. Uh, I mean, yes, probably because there have been known superstars that have obviously left in free agency for other teams in the past. Um, but you know, when you're talking about the caliber of player now Jalen Brunson has become, like. Who knows? I mean, maybe, maybe it is. Uh, he's, he's phenomenal. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's a huge deal and it's it, again, like, yeah, we can sit here and be like, well, they got lucky because they were always going to bring in Brunson. Sure. But like, I mean, they even said this, like Fred Katz was talking about this after last season uh, over the summer that people within the organization were saying like, no, Jalen has like, like he can get to another level even like we, we think that's there. Um, so their faith and belief in him has been rewarded uh, tremendously. And they deserve credit, obviously, for investing in him as a player. Um, and and also, like, yeah, like, yeah, sure. Maybe we got Josh Hart and Dante DiVincenzo because they're his buddies. But guess what? Like, the front office is the one that has to make those moves and acquire those players and give out those contracts and get them to sign on the, on the line. Um, and they did. They brought in those guys. They And they've been rewarded for that, right? Like, Josh Hart, again, I mean, tonight – what the hell did he even end up with? I swear to God, he had like a fucking... He had, he had 16, 16, and 5. Yeah, just ridiculous performance again from him. Uh, Dante DiVincenzo didn't even have a great game tonight, but I thought he was solid. And obviously his contract, we don't need to talk about this much more, but it's a massive steal. Um, Isaiah Hartenstein, like all these dudes are bringing in. And if you look at the draft, where these guys were picked, um, the highest, like the guy that was drafted highest on this team is Julius Randle, and he's not even playing right now. But, like, Jalen Brunson, second-round pick. Mitchell Robinson, second-round pick. Deuce McBride, second-round pick. Uh, Josh Josh Hart, late first. Isaiah Hartenstein, second-round pick. Dante DiVincenzo, uh, mid-first. Like, you know... Was he, I, was I, he the last pick of the lottery? I forgot. You know, he was the 17th pick. Um, I don't... I have no idea where Bogdanovich was traded. He's also, like, 75 years old. And, uh, <laughs> you know, obviously, whatever. The point is, though, like, they've... You know, when you talk about doing it kind of step by step patiently and and building it like they've done that they, you know they've they've been methodical they have not blown their load when everybody thought they would right oh my god they have to get down to mitchell if they don't get down to mitchell where are they going to get the star they didn't do it they didn't pull the trigger then uh they were rewarded for that decision last year and honestly you can argue that we've been rewarded for it again because they were able to then use those pieces guys that were going to go out in that trade for mitchell rj barrett Quentin Grimes and Emmanuel quickly to upgrade their current roster, right? They don't get OG if they, if they make the Donovan Mitchell trade in all likelihood, they might not get Bogdanovich and Burks and you can say whatever you want about them. Um, but like Bogdanovich, especially, I mean, I thought he played really well in the first half today. Uh, and I think he's showing signs of like, okay, he, he's not a stiff. Like we, we see what we 
this is the guy that we traded for. Um, but like, yeah, I mean, they've been rewarded for their methodical approach, their patient approach. Um, all right, let's get to some of these comments. Chris Bernard, although it didn't happen. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. Just, just one point to the Bogdanovich thing. Every game we've had against legitimate teams, right, the Heat, um, the Kings, now with the Celtics, and I'm sure I'm missing a couple more. He always plays his best against these teams where minutes are really important, where somebody else needs to carry the scoring load, where there's not going to be any like kind of dead point in the game. He comes in against these other really good teams, and he's on his shit. He's, he's getting to his spots. He's not messing around, not doing dumb stuff with the ball, not getting locked up by Evan Fournier. He it looks like a totally different player when he's playing against this type of competition versus when he plays like the Pistons. And I just think people overreacted to that a whole lot, like a whole, whole lot. This guy had a track record, 20 points per game in the regular season, legitimate playoff performances for the Jazz and whoever else. He needed way more leeway than a lot of people were willing to give him, and I'm glad that he's playing great for us right now. Yeah, I mean, he's giving us what we ultimately Trader. want. Yeah, we just give us some, give us some offensive – scoring um additional scoring when brunson's off the floor uh and even hell he played a bunch of minutes with brunson today and it looked pretty good so um we'll see hopefully that continues going into the playoffs uh all right getting to some of these comments chris bernard although it didn't happen the celtics are real lucky to injure guys to get easy on them and let their starters leave the game healthy Missoula should have pulled those sorry players at half yeah i actually was not only did he not pull them in half i mean they basically he played a lot of them for the entire third i think like i think tatum and brown basically played the entire third quarter um Drew Holiday, Derek White. Derek White, I mean, I, I don't know what the fuck the announcers are talking about. He didn't look like he was injured at all on that play they kept talking about. Um, he just looked like he was weird. But, yeah, I mean, like, it, they were very fortunate. Um, and you could tell they, that his players were, you know, they didn't match the Knicks' intensity. They didn't match the Knicks' urgency. He could have pulled the plug midway through the third and been completely justified in it. But nope, he kept him in and Jalen Brown did some bullshit try hard stuff, trying to <laughs> press full court and it, it did not work, but um, you know, congrats to the Celtics. Uh, they can go fuck themselves forever. Uh, Joe Jolity. What's your takeaway from this game? I guess there's not much given how little the Celtics cared by playing all their starters and guarding Brunson like prime Michael Jordan. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I agree. I think it was funny. It, again, I, I I do understand the. I think there's some truth to that to what they're saying, but the truth of it isn't that the Celtics didn't care or that they didn't try. They clearly cared enough to fucking suit up, and they were hundred percent trying. So it's okay to like in your head be like, yeah, the Celtics have a higher level. They'll get there for the playoffs. Sure, I, I think that's probably true. Um, but they tried tonight, and the Knicks kicked their ass. I mean, they they. Yeah absolutely beat the fucking brakes off them. That was dominant. dominant if, if the Celtics weren't trying, then why did they play in nearly the exact coverages as all these other teams who we played who've been trying to beat us, right? Doubling Brunson when when he's coming off screens, if that doesn't work, trapping at half court, getting the ball out of his hands earlier. They did all that stuff. All the stuff that, you know, the good coaches in this league, like, like a spell and whoever, all the things that, you know, the Kings did when Mike Brown went on his rant about how impossible Jalen Brunson is to guard. All those things that those teams did, the uh, the Celtics did them all today. So if the Celtics weren't trying, then I, I don't I don't know what to say. Uh, maybe after halftime, they, they threw up the white flag, but they damn sure were trying. And Jalen Brunson was damn sure open that ass when they were. Yeah. Yeah, he absolutely was. Um Ace Bouchard, sure they won, but it really sucks the Knicks never have the best point on the floor, no matter which one of the 29 teams they play against. Yeah, one of, one of the all-time idiotic comments that has just... It, in fairness, it is nice that he said it, because it is the gift that keeps on giving at this point. Um, it's really great. I love it. I like I like having this joke that we can share. Uh, Ace Bouchard, it's really hilarious that Brunson had to become a top three player in the NBA in the league to merely be, be named an all-star backup. Um, yeah. It's just like last season when he was named, uh, or, or not when actually he wasn't named an All Star, but he was like still a top twenty five player. It's just like right. that uh that tweet that a good friend of ours, Chris, had. It takes everybody in the league like one year to catch up on what a player's become, and same thing happened this year with Brunson giving Dame that starting point guard nod over him, which was ridiculous. 
Yeah, well, it's all right. We, uh, you know, it, it's all about the friends you make along the way, I guess. Yeah. Uh, Joe Jolly, Jason Tatum, big fraud or biggest fraud? I mean, look, I, 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 I don't, I don't think he's like, I don't, I don't think he's a fraud. I do think that like the conversations he's been put into and elevated, like, look, this they've been talking about this guy MVP buzz right every year for like the last two or three years, it just never really happened for him and. Like, sure, his team is stacked and, and whatever. And so, like, yeah, you want to try and argue, like, well, you know, he, he doesn't have to carry because he plays with all his talent. Like, sure, that's fine. But, um, you know, Le- LeBron James played on stacked teams. Yeah. <laughs> and we all knew that he was the best player in the league. So I, I don't really want to hear it. I think that's, like, a bullshit thing. He's just not – he's not an MVP caliber player. That's fine. It's That doesn't mean he's not very good. I, I'll tell you what, if I think if I would I would be very happy if the Knicks could get him and put him next to Jalen Brunson, that'd be cool. I'd I'd be into that. But um, you know, if you're talking about who is the best, the better player, I, I really don't know what the argument is right now for Jason Tatum over Jalen Brunson. Because if your argument is just like, oh well, look at what Jason Tatum can do on defense, sure. But we know that in the playoffs, defenses naturally tick up. Um, that's the nature of it. We also know that Jalen Brunson has played on teams that have played very good defense in the playoffs, uh, both in New York and in Dallas. Uh, And I, you know, in terms of shot creation, consistency, all that, you know, the the whole package offensively, he's clearly better. You know, he's just a better offensive player than Jason Tatum. I don't think that's like very controversial. Um, But yeah, I mean, look, I'm sure that when people drop their top, 10 and top 15s uh Jalen Brunson will be mysteriously absent while Jason Tatum will be 100% in each and every one for effect people are going to hear that and be like uh Jason Tatum uh, the mid-range god and and Duke and Kobe Bryant and like all that all that dumb stuff and it's like man watch a watch a game in depth like don't just watch a game and look up when when whoever it is Mark Jones says Tatum puts up a three and and it's good. Like, dude, watch the game. Jalen Brunson has more moves in his bag. Not to sound like, you know, like we said earlier, ball and stop. More moves in his bag. His shot making is ridiculous, man. Like, for a six one guard, I wasn't there to watch Iverson. I wasn't there to watch whoever else is a six one guard and under from from you know early two thousands to you know whatever. Has there any ever been a guy who? Is six one making these type of tough shots? Yeah, like you can speak to that better than better than it's me. Like, it's basically it's basically Iverson. Um, Nash was a really efficient shot maker, and I think he's actually talked about before. Like he feels like if he played today, he would be way more of a scorer because he would have been more encouraged to to look to score in a way that mm-hmm. still wasn't kind of like the norm for point guards at that time. Um, but I don't think he, he doesn't have the, the same, the same level of all, you know, the totality of Brunson scoring package. And honestly, like Iverson, I know it's a different era and all that shit, but like, even then, um, you know, like he didn't have the three point shooting element that Brunson has, uh, Brunson's also been a much more efficient scorer. And I, I know that like relative to era and blah, 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 like whatever. I'm just saying in terms of the overall scoring package, like, yeah, I mean, it's, it's basically Iverson and then it's, and then it's, it's Jalen Brunson. You're talking about these smaller guys. I think Steph is a little bit bigger Steph. If you want to put, if you want to put Steph in the same kind of like, you know, thing, then sure. Yeah. Obviously Steph, obviously. Um, But yeah, I mean, it's, he's one of one man. He's, he's a unique, really, really unique player. And, uh, Again, it's just a privilege to watch him. Uh, Chris Bernard, I never want to see Jason Tatum as a top five MVK, MVP candidate again. Uh, yes, I agree with that. Ace Bouchard, ESPN ranked Brunson 32nd for the season. Behind JJJ, Bunkero, Trey Young, Lori, Ingram, Drew Holiday, Siakam, Fox, Bonus, Halliburton, Cat, Jalen Brown, Murray, Bam, Donovan, Lillard, Edwards, Butler, Tatum. Insane disrespect. Uh, the Knicks finished the 2022 23 season with 47 wins. That's from Ace Bouchard. Also, uh, the Knicks currently have 48 wins. Yeah. Um, and, and they were one of the healthiest teams in the league last year. 
this year they have been one of the unhealthiest teams in the league. Yep. Um, so, yeah, I mean, and, and look, I, obviously I think it's fair to also be like, hey, well, you can't not expect injuries when you trade for OG Ananobi. Of course, of course, that's <laughs> more than more than fair. That's actually, that's genuinely fair. I, I, I take that point. But like, you don't expect Randall to miss the time he missed. And honestly, even the OG injury was just so weird. And it happened all at the same time, you know, and they battled through it. Mitch obviously missed a bunch of time. They're worried he would not even make it back for the for, at any point this season. Yeah, um, I mean, they applied for the injured player exception thing. Right. So, like, they've been beat up. They've been beat up for a while. And um, for them to be where they are, have a chance at the at the two seed, and certainly a really good chance at the three seed, um, just says a lot about the character of this team, the character of the players, and honestly, the level of buy-in and commitment an effort that Tibbs gets from his, from his groups. Um, and again, obviously also the front office for targeting the character of players they have. Um, Jordan Bubb, most 35 plus points game point games for a Knicks guard in the season. Jalen Brunson, 20. That's this season, obviously Richie Guerin, 18 back in 1961, uh, 1962, my, my childhood, uh, Dick Barnett, 10 in 1965, 1966. That was when I was in middle school, actually. Um, but yeah, um, dude, it's he's he's just special. I don't know what else to say, really. Chris Bernard, Chuck with the heel turn, and I was saying, Indy gonna beat us. I just don't see how a team that doesn't play defense will be a team that plays defense. But hey, maybe I'm wrong. Look, I will say this about Indiana: um, Rick Carlisle is a hell of a he's a hell of a coach. Uh, he's pretty consistently been a really good playoff coach. Uh, I know that he hasn't won a series in a long time. I think a lot of that has to do with some of the rosters. You know, he was able to get to the playoffs in Dallas. Um, as for, after the title team, like they just, they're, I mean, their entire team building strategy was dog shit, but, um, yeah, I mean, I, I would feel pretty confident going into a series against Indiana. Um, I think we have the best player in the series. I think we have the best defender in the series. I think we have better centers. Like, I, I think we have a better roster. So, um, you know, it is what it is. They're, they're not going to give the Knicks credit. Um, until they like win a championship and go 16 and all the playoffs. So uh, it's, it's funny that, you know, to hear you say that uh, it makes me think of when people were like, Oh, um, even when the Knicks win a championship, it'll be, Oh, but they're not going to repeat. Mm-hmm. And for the closer and closer we get to that being like the reality of us potentially winning a championship, the more I feel like that's the truth, man. People are like, we're going to win and people are going to be like, Oh, well uh, they're not, gonna be the 2016 to 2020 warriors and it's like okay get a job bro like come on (laughs) not a dynasty like we we got one like i don't that's all i need um fred katz has this quote uh it's from og and og and obi on jalen brunson he should be the mvp i'm not gonna argue too much against that it'll be Jokic, but um they gotta make up for the one they robbed him of last year. So um he will he will be the MVP. Honestly, I mean Jokic is awesome. Jokic and Jokic, Jokic is amazing. So whatever. Uh Jalen Brunson, this is from Jordan Bubb. Jalen Brunson, Dante DiVincenzo, and Josh Hart combined tonight. 72 points, 22 rebounds, 13 assists. Nova York. Um, yeah, dude, it's it's crazy, actually. Like it's crazy how good all three of them have been this year. And I'm and, and obviously that they're all starting on the same team in the NBA, but like it's crazy now to look back at that at that Villanova team because it was them three. They obviously had McCall Bridges on that too. Like that's probably one. I mean, that's one of the greatest college teams you're ever going to see. Like it's crazy. You have, you know, legit four. Like you have an MVP caliber guy. You've got two great role player wings who do different things, and then you've got one of the best snipers in the fucking league right now. And Divincenzo, like, it's pretty wild, man. That that's a that's a hell of a team. And you, got, and you got Archie Diacono, and yeah. uh, and the Pascal oh, okay. Eric Pascal wasn't he on Nova? Yeah, yeah. Pascal was there. Um, Spellman was there too. Once a Nick, always a Nick. Oh yeah, <laughs> dude, that guy was such a fucking yeah. slob. I remember Tibbs put him in for like a preseason game, and this guy like could not fucking move. And I just remember like in my head, I was like, yeah, dude, Tibbs is. He's he's done with this. Guy. Like he's there's no shot he's giving. Tib, Tibbs probably was like trying to just like relax, like just have something to laugh at, and that's why he put him in. He just, <laughs> just just wanted a fun time. Let's laugh at this guy. 
Uh, Jordan Bub has this. Isaiah Hartenstein in the W versus the number one team in the NBA. 11 points, 13 rebounds, 6 assists, 1 steal, 2 blocks. Hartenstein's fourth straight game with 10-plus points, his 10th double-double this season. Awesome player. Uh, Knicks need to keep him. Um, I love Mitch, but and, – and look, this is the, – the version of Mitch we're seeing right now is obviously not – the, the best version of it. It's obvious that he's struggling with his conditioning and he's still getting back up to speed. Um, but with that said, like, I mean, you watch the way that these guys are, you know, we talked about how Brunson, they're feeding off Brunson, but like Hartenstein's so key to that because he's able to make these quick decisions, keep the offense rolling. They trust him to make plays in space. Um, like, yeah, they, they got to keep him. I don't care what the hell it takes. I don't care if Leon Rose has to write him into his fucking will. Um, like he, he's got to stay. They absolutely need to keep him around. Uh, there's no way around that. Like uh, other than superstar fives, you know, if you're talking about Jokic, Embiid, arguably, you know, and then and then guys like you know Anthony Davis and and even like Chris Stops, Like aside from those guys, I don't think there's an argument that you would want any other five for this team for how they're playing. Like he's fucking awesome. Um, can, can I be honest? I. Around like the tenth game without Mitch, I was sold on iHeart being the starter. Um, when Mitch comes back and, and just being an overall better player. The more I watch around the league, like I think Hartenstein is a better player than like Bam, dude. Yeah, I mean Bam Bam is so weird because like I also like I, I can't believe I really don't want to like defend Bam. Um, but like I think Bam is asked to be something that he's not. Like if Bam, if the, if they were just like, hey, we actually have enough scoring, we just need you to do I heart stuff. Like he'd be pretty fucking awesome at that because he's really good at those things. Obviously, we know he's a phenomenal uh, illegal screen setter. Um, <laughs> but like, like he he's he's obviously skilled, you know, all that all that stuff. But like the the problem for them is this has been a problem for them forever which is why it's so fucking annoying when they like randomly get out from three in the playoffs they don't have enough offense they can't score the fucking rock like watching that game yesterday against the Mavericks was a joke like it, that was a joke that they, they they as soon as the Mavericks they put up what like 111 and it, it it felt like the heat would have needed like another fucking quarter to put up 111 like, it was ridiculous watching the discrepancy between just the talent and, and how easy it was for the Mavericks to score versus like every possession for Miami is like this fucking rock fight. Um, but yeah, look, I, Hartenstein, so he's fucking awesome, man. He, he really is just, just a really tremendous player. He's so, he's so important to the Knicks. Um, this is from John Larry. Assuming Brunson good health wise, grabbing at the wrist and limping a bit, but seemed to be good. Yeah. Brunson, he's not, uh, he's not one of your coastal elite, sissy liberals okay this he's not from silicon valley yeah he's this is a meat and potatoes yep. patriotic american yep. uh molded by the great jay Wright. no obviously like he's he's tough i think he's fine if they need like do you and i know you're you, as you said you seem to think he was good but like um like if the knicks needed him to come back in that game i promise you he would have been able to come back in the game yeah and fine. even when he was grabbing his wrist he came back in he drained like three straight threes so he's, I think he's fine. Um, just like national media saying Nikola Jokic, this Jordan Bob, uh, just like Nick, national media saying Nikola Jokic locked the MVP last night versus Minnesota, then Jalen Brunson locked all NBA first team over Jason Tim tonight. I mean, you can hope. I mean, that that is as good of a national TV final kind of statement. You know, wrap the bow, all the, any any way you want to phrase it. Um, thing like he he did what he had to do. Uh, and he did it on a national stage. So we'll see. Um, there's definitely been some more, you know, the the the, the movement is is yeah. is spreading. Yeah. And I hate to to be the one to bring this up, but like this reminds me of when Quick walked into the TD guard and then dropped whatever the hell he dropped in that double OT game last year, and people were like, Oh, well, he has to be the sixth man of the year now. And then the ringer and all those other BS sites were like, actually. We can we can just like, you know, do uh do Malcolm Brogdon a little solid right here and really tip the voting in his scale, and at that point it was it was you know what was done was done. So I hope um that that's not our reality this time with first team All NBA. But I mean shit, man, I'll take second team All NBA for a guy who didn't start the All Star game. 
Yeah. Um, dude, he if he makes first team All NBA, I will be. He will be the first Nick to do that since Patrick Ewing in 1990. So, um, as I said, this is what a real franchise player looks like. You can take that however you want to take it. Um, Why do you have to do this? I have been waiting years to do this. I've just needed somebody to be my king. Um, and, and my short king has arrived. It's funny calling him short because he literally would tower over me. Um Ace Bouchard, I'm using Bet Online to bet the under on the Celtics over under championship this decade. <laughs> the funny, I it's the, it's still the funniest one, the clip of uh, Jalen Brown, where it's like, dude, he it's so obvious he's just he's a mess talking to Taylor Rooks. I get it. Look, I'd be I'd be saying wild shit too, but it's funny, man. All these athletes go talk to her and they just can't say they can't not say the most absurd shit. Like fucking, you had Michael Beasley talking about using 11 percent of your brain. Um, <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> uh, dude, that guy was off so much weed when he was talking to her that day. Yeah, that was so crazy. Uh, John Leary, Mitch, not fully there. I don't know how he's gonna come, gonna be come playoff time. A bit worried. Uh, yeah, I mean, Con, you were texting me about this during the during the game. Yeah. Um, listen, against backup fives, Mitch will be Mitch, but. What I what I think is also a bit of a problem for him is I think the game has sped up for him in his time that he's been away. Um, that's been noticeable. Like he's get seems really rushed on his finishes when he's bringing the ball down. He's getting stripped. So I think even more so than the conditioning, which which is a big thing, and and we see it, you know, out there. He's he's sluggish at times. Um, just looking slow in general. I'm putting it nicely right now, but um, his his game sense has fallen off a little bit and, and that'll come back hopefully, you know, by, I don't want to count my eggs before they hatch, but like maybe by round two, but it's still something that we have to see. Um, yeah, totally, totally agree. I mean, look, Mitch is, if you go back the last time he Mitch, missed a bunch of time, Mitch, a bunch of time, missed a bunch of time with um, a lower body injury that, you know, obviously you can't do a lot of conditioning work when you have a lower body injury um, was that, and, and he came back, it was the start of that 2021, 22 season. Obviously he was, he doesn't look fat right now. He looks his, his actual physical shape is fine. He looks totally fine. The start of 2021, 22, we obviously saw that he had gained a little too much weight, a little, little too much Popeyes and canes and Chick-fil-A and whatever else he's yeah. eating down the middle, a little too much uh, Cajun food in the bayou. Um, but like, we need to respect seafood boil though. Yes, we do. Um, but like he, he that is not the same issue. But when he came back then, we rem- like I remember it, it it was up and down constantly. And like he like he's like that first game of the season they played the Celtics, he actually played a shit ton of minutes in that game because uh Todd got hurt and it was like Jericho Sims, and we were like, All right, dude, like Jericho Sims was a rookie. Yeah, really? You're going to play the fucking Boston Celtics in your first game? Get the fuck out of here. Um, he was awful, but like, and <laughs> still is awful. Uh, um, but like, but yeah, like Mitch had to, and he, he looked pretty good. Like he played pretty well in that game, but then like you saw a gradual kind of decline and then he'd pick it back up for a week or two and then he'd come back. It's going to, the fact that he's even on the floor right now for this team is huge. Um, I just take that as a win. Whatever he gives us as a bonus, we need Isaiah Hartenstein to be able to play 30, 35, whatever minutes he's going to have to play in the playoffs. And they have been very judicious in managing his minutes um, since kind of like he had that Achilles soreness in January. So um, hopefully they've managed it well enough that that won't be an issue, you know, in terms of a minutes limit come playoff time. We'll have to see. Um, it is what it is. Uh, Ace Bouchard, the Celtics are like the 1920 Clippers. That jump shooting wings nonsense ain't winning in the playoffs, never has, and never will. Interesting, interesting take. Um, I don't think it's like off really. None of them have somebody who's a true, true point guard, you know, like Derek White can can be as good as he wants to be, but he's not somebody who is, you know, you're relying on like to get you into your sets and get you into all your actions like a Jalen Brunson is. So I mean, at the end of the day, the Celtics don't have Kawhi Leonard anyway, so like they're an even potentially like not even as good as the 1920 Clippers, but 
the difference is who they got in the front court, right? Like you're comparing Ivica Zubac to Chris Porzingis, like it's a little, eh. but but I hear that though. I hear the, uh, you know, the base of the comp. Um. Yeah. No, I I think there's some truth to that. I would say that um, the good thing for Boston, I and I I, I have. You can go back and listen to like pods I did with uh, Stacy or not Stacy uh, Prez over the off season. Like I I mentioned at the time that I was like, hey, I don't, I, I still don't really like that. Like this team has no point guard. They did get Drew Holiday, who is you know helped them a bit, but like we've seen Holiday in the playoffs. He's not like a guy you really trust at the end in end of games to run offense and and all that type of stuff. Um, having Porzingis helps. There's just a benefit to like you know, having that level of spacing, it opens up the floor a lot. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, they're, they're still very, you know, I, and like every team is dependent on threes to an extent, but like they just don't consistently get to the rim. Like they don't have guys that consistently get to the rim. Um, and that can always be uh, a problem. I mean, the one team that kind of over overcame that uh, was, the uh you know the warriors teams with steph curry both in like 2015 and 2022 um and even even the durant team it's not like durant got to the rim a bunch right like so they 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 were able to overcome that but like you know i i don't think any of these guys are on the level of steph curry um well so. one one guy in this league is well yeah i mean i'm just saying the celtics though i know i know I just uh, yeah, yeah. but yeah no i mean dude i don't think it's crazy like jalen brunson is playing at a fucking insane level. He's doing a hell of a Steph Curry uh, impression right now. Yeah, yeah, I'll do that. I'll, I'll say that. Uh, John Lurie, one upside with the Julius injury was Brunson is used to all these defensive coverages, so come playoff time, won't throw him off as well. He's ready. Totally agree with this. Um, somebody asked me about this. Somebody actually asked me if they thought if I thought the injuries had helped, um, kind of, and and like Jalen's kind of reading and, and ability to get used to all these different coverages and. I, I don't even think it's debated. Like it absolutely has. It absolutely has. And I think it's also opened up the floor for all these different players. I actually am like, I, I kind of wonder if teams are going way too overboard with like trying to get the ball out of Jalen Brunson's hands. Um, I like the Knicks have benefited from that once they've kind of, once Brunson's adjusted and gotten used to it. I almost wonder if you're better off just being like, yeah, we're not we're not actually going to send any help. You 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 have to score sixty tonight. Score sixty, beat us that way. I, I, it's not something that he struggles to do. Like this guy, it's not. It's not. But you, if can he do that? If if teams are just like, no, we're just going to let you go, and you so you and so he has to, he has to score 40, 50, 60 every night. Um, that's hard in the playoffs, man. And not just because I, I of course he can. We know he can do it. He's shown he can do it. But to do that, if you have to do that every single game, it's tough. That's that's that that can be very challenging. Uh, yeah. Judah Bencher. I always thought JB needed to do better with shaving upper body hair, but after seeing that girl taking a bite of his ass, maybe he smells better than I thought. I, I was reading this like before you put it up. I, I didn't catch this. Yeah, I didn't catch this either. What if somebody could uh, let me know when this happened? I would love to to be in on this joke because that sounds yeah. hilarious. Uh, Joe Schmo Tatum didn't care, but he was complaining about every call. Yeah, dude, that Tatum thing today was fucking crazy. And I don't know, they wouldn't shut the fuck up at the start of the game about one, Jason Tatum being upset with the officiating, and two, the Celtics not shoot, didn't shoot any free throws against the Bucks. Like, for like, I might care that the Celtics didn't shoot any free throws against the Bucks if the Bucks hadn't also gotten only two free throws in the game. Like, so basically, they had just decided nobody's going to the line in this game. I don't really understand what there is to be that upset about because as I see it, they called it pretty evenly both ways. And yeah, tonight, I mean, fuck Tatum, bro. Like I gotta say fucking Brian Windhorst, that fucking shit. He said about him being a foul bait or master of the dark arts. It is such a joke to say that when you watch what he did tonight, he put up 39 points. What did he score? He went three or five from the free throw, free throw line. Yep. He just put 36 points from the field. And he did it from the three point line. He did it from the mid range. He did it at the rim. Like he did it in every fucking way you could you could possibly do it. Um, that was an embarrassing comment at the time, and it increasingly looks ridiculous. And he's uh, he's 
like kind of semi walked it back. But with every game that passes, it's like the stuff the stuff that people say about about Brunson, he just like takes it personally. Like I, I I'm sure he he'll he'll never admit to hearing it, and maybe he doesn't hear it. Like I genuinely don't know. But like the Becky Hammond one A thing immediately takes the game up another notch. Um Kenny Smith with the best player on the court is never on the Knicks thing. Holy like, shit. I just saw that thing that uh Judah was talking about. It's hilarious. <laughs> I I I still have no clue. Can you can you DM that to me? Check check in Discord. Zach sent it to us in the main okay. chat. Okay. Um but yeah like Brunson is he reminds me of when I remember when I was growing up and I heard people say that uh, Derek Jeter used to make st- make things up about what people would say about him and the team, and then like Michael Jordan kind of did the same thing. And it's like, dude, if if they weren't saying all this stuff about JB, I'm sure he would make up some bullshit to say to himself anyway to like get him motivated and fired up. Like that guy is such a killer. When when that guy saw green in front of him today, or whatever jerseys the Celtics were in, he saw food. And man, <laughs> that guy, he's just I'm I'm sorry that like I don't have anything else to, to say to this, but like that's just how ridiculous he is. There's nothing else to say about Jalen Brunson. All, all you can do is just sit here as an Knicks fan, watch it with a smile on your face and say, Thank you, thank you, Jalen, so much. Uh yeah. He he's fucking awesome. Um, Jordan Bub, Bulls fans just troll the Knicks about Chicago having a better rebuild and future. Now the Bulls are boasting about having home court advantage in the prestigious nine versus ten play in game. Yeah, look, I, the the Bulls stuff was always really funny to me um, because, like, you remember when? So we hired Leon Rose. Obviously, he did not have any front office experience, um, and they hired Arturis Karnasovas yep. around the same time. Um, in the same offseason, basically. And um, there was all this, there was a lot of Knicks fans that were like, oh my God, why couldn't we have done this? He has experience in, in the front office from Denver. He's obviously blah, blah, blah. And, um, you know, like consistently throughout their time, I've disagreed with a lot of the moves that the Bulls have made. I've been really, really critical of them. Like I, I did not, I thought the Vucevic trade was stupid literally the day it happened. I thought it was dumb. Um, I thought the and- March trade was stupid the day it happened. Yeah, I, I did. I didn't agree with either of those moves. Um, obviously, they've had some bad luck with Lonzo. Although I would suggest that Lonzo always carried a level of injury risk. Now, I want to be clear: like, I don't think anybody expected this, right? I mean, he's literally has not played now for two seasons. Um, we'll see if he can come back. Hopefully, he can because it really like he's actually like a very fun player. Um, but just you know, it's it's tough, but. They've, they've literally not tr- made a trade in like three years involving players or something, which is insane. Like, th- that's actually crazy. I don't even know how that's possible. Um, they gave up two lottery picks, right? They gave up the pick that was Franz and they gave up the, uh, who was the, other, the Jed Howard pick um, that Orlando made this past year. Like, they, they've been a disaster. And, um, you know, I, I think. I think Billy Donovan's probably gotten more out of that group than or he's at least gotten as much out of that group as you could reasonably expect given everything they've done. Uh, and then the final thing that was like, I always thought was stupid was the logic of like, well, they had to trade for Vooch and they had to do the DeRozan thing because otherwise Levine would have wanted to leave. And I'm like, dude, it's Zach Levine. If he wants to leave, then tell him to get the fuck out. I'm not making franchise, uh, you know, franchise most- altering moves because Zach Levine what might be upset if I don't like, and, and, then, and then they paid him, they paid him that ridiculous contract. So yeah. Dude, you're not, you don't owe Zach Levine shit. Like he didn't, he didn't revive your franchise. He didn't take you out of the dark ages. Like you traded Jimmy Butler for that guy and he became not as good as Jimmy Butler. Okay. Well, they didn't, they didn't owe him nothing. And then they still hitched a wagon to him. It's, one of the most stupid decisions of all time or of recent memory. Yeah. Um, yeah, just a, a very, very stupid decision. Um, all right. 
Uh, Ace Bouchard Tatum cared as much as he did in the finals against the Warriors. <laughs> That, looking back on the finals, I I was like so torn because I was a habitual Steph hater. Like like during that during that kind of year two year period, and I was so torn because I was like either Steph's gonna win or the Celtics are gonna win. It's the worst day of my life, and I I couldn't give a shit less now that the Steph won. Like I I'm I'm a huge Steph guy now. So thank you Steph, thank you Wardell for uh, saving my life. Appreciate that. <laughs> Yes, Steph. Steph. Uh, he he paid it forward to the Knicks, right? He told Divincenzo to come here too. So, uh, shout yeah, out to him. We told him how to shoot. Let's fucking go. Yeah, thank you, Steph. Uh, we appreciate you as an honorary Nick. Um, Jordan Bub. This is from Tom Thibodeau. Tom Thibodeau and Jalen Brunson. The best thing is he thinks he can get better, and he will because that's his mindset. I think Tom Thibodeau would like. It's probably hard for him. Like you know, if you were like, he he. Probably I don't know who he loves the most on this team. Uh because there's a lot of guys that he loves on this team. It's hard. It's hard. I have no clue who he would say. If we're if we're putting betting odds, like I I'd still putting my money in Josh Hart. I I I yeah, I was gonna say Josh Hart. I think the best value is probably Deuce. Yeah. Cause Deuce Deuce will probably be like a like a plus five hundred ish. Oh yeah, yeah. Because I, I don't think people would think of Deuce before Brunson or, or like Mitch or Hartenstein or whatever. So uh, yeah, I think Deuce is probably the best value there. But as as far as Brunson getting better and leveling up again, like if Deuce levels up, w- like what is he leveling up to? The fucking goat? <laughs> like what, is he gonna is he gonna grow and like become a lockdown defender? Like that? What what more could he do to level up? I don't know. Yeah, just I, just I guess score. It, Score thirty five a game. I guess hit like ninety three percent of his free throws instead of eighty six. Like yeah, he's, he's yeah. slacking at the line this year. Slacking yeah. at the line this year. He's got to pick that up. Do. Yeah. Um. Yeah, he's been awesome. Uh, Ace Bouchard Brunson isn't a superstar. He's literally the superstar in the East. I mean, it's not unfair to say. Um, Giannis is there. Um, but yeah, I mean. Aside from Giannis, I don't really think there's an argument for anybody else. And honestly, I think this year, if we're going to be honest, like I, I think there's a pretty reasonable argument that Brunson has been more valuable to the Knicks than Giannis has to the Bucks, which is wild to say. Um, if we're going to be Giannis, <laughs> Giannis, uh, yeah, that's good. Um, yeah, I, I had to fill in for Stacy with the, with the puns and the. <laughs> This is I, I love Tibbs. Tom Thibodeau says the Knicks did some really good things, but also adds you got to play for forty eight minutes, and we didn't do that. Tibbs during that fourth quarter was awesome. That was a like <laughs> peak Tom Thibodeau fourth quarter blow, blowout of a fourth quarter type of performance from him. Just fucking losing his mind. <laughs> but to be fair, I, I it was like annoying at a certain point. We're like, dude, can this game just fucking end? And the Celtics yeah. didn't stop trying. It was like, oh no, no, I actually won. I hit a parlay today. I, I you know. We're in, we're, we're in for Sam and Tyrese. Sam sent the play to me today. I hit the Peyton Pritchard delay um, on that last minute three ball. It's yeah, Peyton Pritchard, Joe Mazzula. I appreciate the both of you guys. <laughs> Please never say that again. Uh, John Leary, highly, highly desperate. I actually don't mind. The Knicks are highly, highly desperate. I actually don't mind the result. Celtics coach Joe Mazzula on losing to the Knicks. Joe Mazzula is such a fucking weirdo. Um, I know I don't even like take anything he says too seriously because I don't think he even has logic. Like he just says things and they're so weird all the time. Remember that thing where he talked about, he like watches the town every day or something. The, um, the movie, the town. Yeah. So he's like, that's the movie he's watched the most. And he like watches it all the time. Is this guy. Okay. All it's right. like, yeah, dude, I get it. You're, you're the Celtics head coach. You love you're, Boston. You're, you're so fucking Boston, bro. <laughs> Yeah. So no, by, by the way, you're not white. They will never accept you, but <laughs> they, they will never accept you. You're not one of them. Uh Ace Bouchard, Brunson is the best player in the East since LeBron. Uh I like oh, this. Just keep going. Right. Keep going. Yeah. I uh, mean, he's he's feeling good tonight. So keep going, Ace. Knicks 18 and 3 when OG plays, just smoke the league's best team. Shaq and Chuck. The Pacers will beat the Knicks in the first round. Uh, yeah, I don't get that one. Whatever. Judah Bencher is Joe Mazzulla the new Monty Williams. Joe Mazzulla is a fucking lunatic. I don't even know what the hell he is. 
uh, I I don't care for what Joe Missoula is. He, he can <laughs> fuck off. Chris Bernard, to be fair, that fourth quarter, every Nick player had the mindset of Ken's clock just hit zero. Yeah. You can see they had zero urgency and didn't really care. I think yeah. they were just like, even though Hornstein was playing physical, quote unquote, just because he had to, and he's, and he's by the rim, by the basket. And he, he was fucking around, though. He got a couple of grenades tossed to him, too. And I was like, please, like, let somebody else shoot the grenades, not the guy who's like, Seven one has Achilles tendonitis right now, like all this different shit. Um, but I mean, whatever, we get out of there alive. So, sure. Yeah. Uh. Yes, Jordan Bob, Jalen Brunson has seen the entire span of possible coverages over the past several months and has smoked all of them, hundred percent. He's been short. Chris Stops can't post up Dante on a switch. This is always the concern with the stretch big like that. He doesn't take advantage of the mismatches and the stuff that's on a true creator. I'd push back on this a little bit. He actually is like having a historically great post scoring season. Obviously, he did not have a great post scoring game tonight. Um, but I do agree with the true creator part. And I think their way of trying to get around that was to add Chris Stops so that they spread the floor. You know, I mean, they have the best floor spacing in the NBA. I don't think that's like. No one's close. Yeah, it's it's not a hot take. Um, but even then, um, I don't know. I, I still have some doubts about them, man. Like, I, I, my feeling with them is always that if you can get them into a close, close games, down the stretch, I still really don't trust that team. I just don't. Uh, and I know their, like, clutch rating and all that stuff has been pretty good this year. I just, it just doesn't, I don't know. Something about it just doesn't add up to me. I, I'm still a little bit skeptical of them. Um, they are the favorites in the East, though, for sure. And, um, you know, look, if if the Knicks get them, you know, assuming the Knicks get the second or third seed, the Knicks make it to the Eastern Conference Finals and play them. Um, I don't think the Knicks are – the Knicks are not just going to roll over. I'll say that. We know that. Yeah, I think – I think – um. From the consensus of like what I've seen, I think Knicks fans are getting a little, 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 little bit over their skis. Um, but we're gonna give the Celtics a series, man. Like they they better not expect just because we don't have Randall to beat us in five. Like that's maybe that happens. I don't know, but it won't be all five of those games will be fucking fought tooth and nail. Like they're not they're not getting out of here without some scratches. Yeah, I'm leaving here with something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Jordan Bub, we're giving up corner. Th- we're giving up corner threes. Talk to each other. Tibbs up fifty with a minute left. That clip they played of him was fucking insane. He like was he literally lost his voice in the middle of that. He was like, <laughs> like he's like screeching. Um, he was losing his mind. That was awesome. That was actually fucking awesome. I love that. That's, um, that's my coach. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. No. It's that's 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 the type of like thing that helps set a culture and is why the Knicks are where they are. Um, yeah, he's been, he's been awesome. Uh, here we go. All right. Guys, Bob, just letting you know, we need two more Harrison Barnes, three balls. We, yeah, we need that. Yes, um, yes we do. Jordan Bob, Dante DiVincenzo has 276 threes this season. Dante tied 2015, 16 clay for 16th all time. That's crazy. Wow. <laughs> I mean, he's he's putting them up, man. He he's got the greenest light on the team in that in that way, um, and he he deserves it. He he's justified it. He's been spectacular. Nobody can deny that. Um, again, the, the the value the Knicks have gotten in free agency the last two years is fucking incredible. They've got three starters. One guy's an MVP candidate, legitimately, and the other two are like high-end starters in the NBA, right? Hardenstein and Dante. That's crazy. And then, I mean, you can argue they effectively got Josh Hart in free agency since they re-signed him. I mean, they did trade for him, but they re-signed him. He's been awesome. Um, yeah, I mean, the work they've done is spectacular. So, looking at the all-time three-point leaderboard for a season, uh, Dante said tied for 16th. So, we have two games left. Dante, if he if he gets hot, he can climb maybe to like ten, because 
10 is Buddy Heald at 288. He's at 276. If he gets hot, he can hit 10. Um, uh, but he'll, he'll probably finish at like 12 or 13. 12 is Steph with 285. 13 is Luca with 284. Actually, that's the season that Luca has that. So, but regar- regardless, bro, like 12 and a half million dollars for that. Thank you very much, Leon. We'll take that to the bank. Yeah. Jason Aravalo, Brunson fucking lied telling us he wasn't the savior. Yeah, you yeah. did lie to us. Yeah, yeah. What Tyrese has, a, Tyrese has a good tweet about that. Yep. Um, Jordan Bub, Jalen Brunson is better than Jason Tatum. It's not particularly close. The panel, do you agree with the statement of mine? Um, I mean, I think he's better. Yeah. I don't know if I would say it's not particularly close, but when you're judging the overall value and all that stuff, but like, would I trade Jalen Brunson? Would I even consider trading Jalen Brunson for Jason Tatum? No, 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 I, I wouldn't. The version that aren't they basically like, what is, is Tatum 25 now? I think Tatum is 25 and Brunson is 27. No, Tatum, Tatum's 26. So, Tatum's yeah, 26. I mean, you're not, it's, it's he's, he's, yeah. Brunson's 27. He'll be 28 though. When August 31st. Holy shit, he's born two days after me. Doesn't, doesn't count. That's, that's for next season. So, Still, still just yep. 27. Agendas, agendas, you're right. Yep. Uh, Ace Bouchard, people squinted so hard and wanted to pretend Grimes was Reggie Bullock, but the reality was that he was the lesser defender shooter version of Reggie Bullock. I, I still feel like Grimes just had oh, a disaster. Yeah. No, nope. I think, yeah, I think he had a disaster season. Um, I, 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 I would be, I really would be surprised if like the version we saw this year is closer to what we get from him in the future than what we saw from him the previous season. I, I just, it's really, it would be, I mean, it's happened before. We know that it, it can happen, but I, I just feel like he had, I don't know what the hell was going on with him this year, but obviously he had a terrible one. Um, Nick's, Nick's looked incredible tonight. I'm looking at Grimes. He's looked good. <laughs> <laughs> Is Grimes playing today? No, he didn't play. No, he's out for, he's out for the rest of the season, right? Yeah, he is. Yeah. Uh, OG and Brunson is the best team in the East by a mile. Ace Bouchard. Uh, I mean, it's not, it's like very hard to reconcile. Um, you know, it's hard to reconcile, like, Connection. all the numbers, all the numbers really are basically like when the Knicks have their guys and OG is available, they are like they have basically been the best team in the East. But in my head, I'm so like, I just feel like even if Brunson plays 42 minutes a night in the playoffs, those six minutes when he's off the bench are brutal. And I just don't know uh, if they'll be able to overcome it. But like, it's not, again, it's not crazy. It's just not crazy, which is also crazy to say. Um, With know. those non Brunson minutes, like, you just gotta, like, I would drain the clock in those non Brunson minutes. I would hold the ball for 24 seconds and and to and eat the violation in those non Brunson minutes. Obviously, I'm I'm being facetious, but like they they are so bad. I wonder at, like at what point does Tibbs kind of go back to what he did before, um, and just sell out on defense in those non Brunson minutes? Like just whoever the five best defenders are on the roster, like you're playing when Brunson on the bench because we can't afford to give up that many points. Yeah, stuff. <laughs> um, Joe Schmo, Julius fully leading into his bully ball this year made us better. The Knicks are such a headache to deal with. Julius running into over and over again just makes things worse for them. Yeah, <laughs> I, again, I, I the Jul- Julius, I, I, I still think that the Knicks will miss him in the playoffs. Can they overcome that? The numbers say they can, um, that they have found something. But in my head, I'm just like, man, it's tough if only one guy in your team can really create offense consistently. By the way, OG had the most disgusting offhand layup attempt tonight that I never want to see again. Him trying to create <laughs> off the dribble and putting up lefty layups is like, that's that's my 9-11. That Dude, my he, 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 looked, he looked like me in fucking rec league, bro. Like, that that was not pretty. Dude, that was disgusting. Honestly, it's just absolutely nasty. nasty. Um. April Kenny Jordan Bob, April Kenny Jalen Brunson has been the best player in the Eastern Conference by far. Yeah, I, I who who is April Kenny? 
I think that's what he, that's he's saying. That's what he said in April. Oh, oh that's today. Um, but All I mean, right. obviously, we know what he said earlier in the season. But like, I'm, I'm washed. Okay, yeah, that's it. Is it is very very crazy how good he's been. Uh. All right. I'm sorry. I'm just looking through comments here, trying to get to as many as I can. Uh, well, Clyde Fraser, except for Deuce and Mitch, no rotation guys play together for more than two seasons. It's the first season for some guys. As chemistry grows and health returns, this team can become a powerhouse. Yeah, and I, I saw, I mean, not that you need an image, but like all these dudes are in their prime or entering their prime. All of them. Like if this team sticks together, they can definitely be a force in the East for multiple years to come. Yeah. No question. Uh, all right. Here, acknowledge acknowledge Jalen Brunson right here. Jordan, uh, Zen Rosen says, Brunson is better than prime Jordan, to be honest. Yes. Don't let the, uh, the old head 1990 fans tell you otherwise. Jordan wouldn't survive in this era. You're, you're yeah. goddamn right. <laughs> Michael Jordan would not, he would not, uh, be able to carry Jalen Brunson's jock. No, he, he wouldn't. I mean, the the skill, the the shot making, Jordan just didn't have that stuff. <laughs> Jalen Brunson and Josh Hart, he just runs around and decides to do something. He's not playing basketball. <laughs> 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 uh, Zan Rosen, Brunson the play is going to show a lot of people how good he is. People will buy in then. I mean, I would like to believe this, but he did that last year and people were still like finding reasons why Tyrese Halliburton was better because FIBA is the most important judge of basketball skill, apparently. Fuck off, man. This is pathetic. 20, the 2023-24 Pistons have clinched the worst record in franchise history. The 1979-80 team was 16-66. and 66. This team can't win more than 15 games with two left. That's embarrassing. I, I can't believe that. Like, Monty's not going to get fired. Doesn't seem like Troy Weaver's going to get fired. That's crazy. I mean, People should be losing their jobs. Monty wouldn't get fired, but Troy Weaver should be. Like, they owe it to their fans to fire him before the season's over. They owed that to them three fucking weeks, months ago. Like, I, they're going to let him have the number one pick in the draft again. Like, or not again, but this year. Like, it's just so bad. Yeah, he, he should have been fired, like, when they had that. What, what was their loot? They had, like, a 30 game losing streak, right? Was that? Yeah. What yeah. Was? Some, some yeah. of that nature. Yeah. He, he should have been fired at some point during that. Um, Nick's tape is here. Hello, gentlemen. I have a take. Fuck Boston. Yes. Yeah, um, we, me and me and Luca were texting each other, and we were like, "What's the odds that Schwinn, uh, if if we beat the Celtics, that Schwinn just tweets fuck Boston with the Draymond video?" <laughs> and, then, uh, and then you tweeted fuck Boston, and then added like another paragraph about like Brunson, I think, and yeah. then you tweeted the video so that it, didn't it counts. Happen. It counts. Oh, it counts. counts. Okay, all right. It counts. That, Luke, yeah, that's, that's, it's, that, that video is just... I don't think I could ever get sick of it. It's not possible. It's the football music, man. Like It's so good, man. <laughs> I just love... I love the one... The part of the video where he stomps on Sabonis and then they cut to him on the sideline screaming <laughs> pussy at <laughs> <on> somebody. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Like, bro, it's, bro, he stomps and... <laughs> It pants to him screaming, and then it goes. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> <laughs> the other one I really like is the one where he gets knocked down on one end of the floor, and he's upset, and then he just sprints full speed down the other end and like and tackles Uber or whoever the fuck it is. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. <laughs> and then and then they, and then they have <laughs> they have the Jordan Poole punch in their <laughs> They put a sound effect on it. <laughs> they, put a, they put a punching sound effect on it. Um, it's dude, it's it's the best video I've ever watched in my life. It's, it's actually like it gives me it gives me hope for humanity. Um by the way, this is from Nora. Uh Iverson nowhere near as good as JB, especially in efficiency. I don't think Iverson would really thrive in this era. Um I, I don't know if I would agree with the latter part, but I agree that Bruns I mean Efficient in terms of efficiency, Brunson is on a different planet to Iverson. Um, and even if you want to adjust for era and all that stuff, even then, Brunson clears him. Um, so yeah, uh, John Larry, yes, that's Let's yeah, go. 
John, that's this what's... Brunson season clears Mello 2012-13 season. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. It does. I agree. Even as I somebody who grew up, like, like, I, I, I said my age on here. I grew up as like the Knicks fan in my family, who had a cousin who was a Nets fan, and another cousin who was a Celtics fan, and another cousin who was just a straight up LeBron fan. I was the ugly duck. I had probably the worst, like, because the Nets had that time period where, like, they were decent, right, when they when they got to, like, Brooklyn and, like, whatever. Um, I was always, like, oh, but, like, I have Carmelo Anthony, so maybe we could, like, just pull it out somehow because, you know, he gets buckets. It's like, okay. Now I have Jalen Brunson. I know what a fucking leader looks like. I know what a fucking dog looks like. Like, oh my God, Mellow, man. Like, I don't want to go too hard on Mellow on, on this live stream, but I, I'm just, you could have done so much more. You had so much more to control than people make it out to seem. He chose the situation. That's what I, I don't get. You can't be like, well, the management sucked. Okay. I agree. The management sucked. He fucking wanted to come here. He forced his way here. I guarantee you. If our organization was a fucking shit show, Jalen Brunson would have took him, taken one look at this team and been like, yeah, I'm good, actually. I'm not going there. Not <laughs> happening. Like, you cannot – it is part of – like, Melo was a phenomenal scorer. He's a really great player. He's a no doubt about it first ballot Hall of Famer. I get why he wanted to leave Denver. I have no issue with that. I think he was fully justified in trying to leave Denver. He made the decision – to say, hey, if the Knicks don't trade for me by the deadline, I will accept a trade to Brooklyn, and I will sign an extension with them. He fo- he gave the Nuggets leverage to extract a price from the Knicks that they sh- never should have been able to extract. The fact that Knicks had bad management with Donnie fucking Walsh, who is the most overrated executive in the history of basketball, um, exacerbated the issue. And, like... You know, look, when Melo, Melo had a chance to leave after 2013-14, he had a chance to leave. He's a free agent. And what did he do? What did he do? He, he could have left to, to the Bulls, right? He That's could have left to go to the Bulls, a team that he would have given them a really good fucking shot to put them over the top. What did he do? What did he do? Nothing. He chose to stay on a bad team that had a rookie executive in Phil Jackson because they gave him the most money of any team that, could, that that was available and they gave him a no trade clause. So he had total control. That's what he wanted. He wanted to be in New York. He wanted, he didn't care if it was new, the Knicks or Brooklyn or yeah, the Nets. So I don't want to hear about that. Obviously he preferred the Knicks, but push comes to shove. He was okay. Going to the Nets. He like, that's he, he didn't want the pressure or he, he, he didn't want, he, he basically was able to parlay the Knicks incompetence of management into Oh well, what can he do? What more can what more can he do? I don't know. He could probably fucking defend, maybe pass a little bit more, score efficiently, take better shots, things of that nature, move off the ball. I don't know. I think there's a lot of things that a player as talented as he is or was should have been able to do better, and he didn't do those things. So I'm sorry. Like when I watched Jalen Brunson this year versus peak Carmelo Anthony uh, in New York. I don't even understand what the argument is for Amelo being like, they're not even on the same fucking level to me. Like they're just not as players, forget the fucking all the intangible stuff that you get from Brunson that, you know, makes him somebody that you are like, yes, this is everything. If you're trying to build something, this is a guy that can be the bedrock of that. Melo didn't want to do any of that stuff. He didn't want to have have to be the vocal leader. He didn't want to have to – he didn't take charges. He didn't do any of this shit, okay? Like, this is a guy who bristled at the idea of playing the four, even though that was clearly his best position. He didn't want to play the four, which is why the Knicks spent so much time during his time here having him not play the four because he didn't want to do it. That was his best position, and the team was better when he played the four. Every bit of fucking evidence said that. But he didn't care because that's not what Carmelo Anthony wanted to do. Um, I'm sorry. I don't have fond memories of Carmelo Anthony or his bullshit fucking era here. Um, I think it's one of the most, it's like, um, you, you know, like it's, it's, it was like fake. It was 
it was glossy on the surface, but once you dug underneath, you know, and examined things, there was no sub <laughs> there was no substance to it. There was no there was no staying power to that team. There was and there never could be. And that's not all on Carmelo, but he chose to come here in the dumbest fucking way possible. And he chose to invest the prime of his career with a team that had terrible management. That was his choice. That was his choice. You cannot sit there and tell me NBA players have more power than players in any other sport, but somehow Carmelo Anthony couldn't exert any of that. Which to... is true. Yeah, it is true. And that's my point. Is like If oh. that's the case, then Carmelo Anthony should have been able to either get out of New York to go to a better situation, or he should have just fucking left. And he didn't. He never did. He never chose it. He always chose the money. That's what mattered to him in his career. I won't begrudge him that. That's Players can have whatever priorities they want. His priority was always locking in the most amount of money at every single stage of his career. That's why he took the five-year extension when LeBron, Bosh, and Wade all signed the three-year extension. That's why he took, that's why he wanted the trade to New York and he wanted to lock in the extension before that offseason. That's why he stayed in New York after 2014. Like he always cared about the money. That's what he prioritized throughout the peak of his career. That's it. I'm sorry. I did not and want to turn this. Like, like, like you said. Nobody gives a shit if you prioritize the money. Like, no, I mean, you can care about it, but like, I don't, I'll never begrudge it. Like, that's you have what 15, 20 years if you're lucky as an NBA player to, to maximize your career earnings. Like, I mean, 15 yeah, years, you're a star, and you're, and you're like, yeah, if right. you're a dude who's you know on the fringe of the league, like, yeah, I mean, if you're a star, I feel like the argument is less valid because what's the difference between 800 million and 780 million in career earnings. Shit, I'll never know, right? Like, fucking, I wish I could know, but that's not the reality of it. And, like, would it have killed Melo to, like, instead of seeing, like, not even one less zero, but, like, instead of 100 million, if you if you saw, like, 92 million, like, I don't know. I, I, I'll, I'll never hold it against a player that he went and got his money, but I also would like for fans to stop being naive and saying, oh, I, I, the thing I hate, I'll, this is the last thing I want to talk about. The thing I fucking yeah. hate the most with Carmelo that I always have to hear about. Well, you got to respect he took the challenge. Why do I have to respect that? Because he did, he did, he took the challenge in the dumbest fucking way possible. And you're acting like he took the challenge one and succeeded, which he did not, or two, that he even gave a shit about the challenge being no. say, like, you know, bringing back the Knicks. No, he didn't. Look at how he got to the Knicks. Look at what he was willing. He was willing to go to Brooklyn. If all he cared about was taking the challenge of the Knicks and New York, he could have done. He could have gotten here in a much better way. He, he did, and he did. This guy, who did he fucking like? Brunson has already recruited. He's recruited Josh Hart here. He's recruited Dante Divincenzo here. Uh, I would imagine that if we retain Isaiah Hartenstein, he will be key to that. Um, he has fostered a culture with this team that is just significantly superior to anything that was any version of the Knicks we saw with Carmelo Anthony, including the 54 win season in 2012, 13, because that team was built on a bunch of old fucking veterans who had no staying power in the league because they were on their last legs. Um, I'm sorry. Like I just, I don't, I don't feel fondly about Carmelo Anthony's time in New York. I don't reminisce about it. I don't give a fuck about it. I don't want to see his fucking jersey <laughs> retired in the rafters. Because why the fuck would I want his jersey retired in the rafters? So okay, I can remember. No, 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 no. Too much, too much, no, too much. No, fuck that. Wait, he gave me he gave me two playoff brits? Sorry, three. I guess. Sorry. Oh, three. I'm supposed to give a fuck about that? Get the fuck out of my face, bro. We can just start or we can start retiring. Fuck. We should retire Chris Dudley's number then. Get the fuck out of here. All right. Enough Carmelo. Uh Larry Israel. Burks was drafted 12. And Randall's Kentucky team may have been better than that Nova team. Uh, fair point on the Kentucky team, although they didn't win the national championship. Um, but Fucked. Burks is not actually part of this team. Please never bring him up, bring him up again. Um, oh, by the way, DNP for Burks tonight. How special? Uh, the great, the great coach Tibbs. Yeah, he's just he basically is just like, yeah, we're good, dude. We're good. Like we, we I've seen enough. I've, I've seen. I, I imagine like before the game, he just like sees Alec Burks. He just like does the. Like, you know when you see like a white person in public and they just go like, like do you do it? like like that little that little weird smile. He just sees him. He doesn't say nothing. He's just like, hey, "What's up, Alec? Like you're not getting in the game today. I hope you know that." Like fuck. Up. Yeah. yeah. Um. 
All right, here we go. Uh, Jeff Burn, Chris, sorry, Chris Bernhard. Gafford pants and bam all day I shows well. I didn't know Gafford was Wilt Chamberlain when he's not on the Wizards, dude. That the Gafford pickup for them has been really good, and he's a guy I did not. I've never, I, I've not thought highly of in the past. Um, like I, I don't think he's. I, I've never thought he's like, oh, he's a bad player. But I've never been like, oh my god, Gafford, what a huge addition he would be for a team like the Mavericks. He's been great for them. Obviously, he benefits playing off of Luca and Kyrie, but. Yeah, he was dominant. I mean, he he owned Bam yesterday. That was ridiculous to watch. Um, in general, man, like, look, it's fun to look, we don't really need to worry about the Mavericks anymore because, like, we got there. You know, yeah, it's done. It's everything is done. We took, we took, we got our franchise point card from them. You know, like we got our picks from them. We gave them all our shitty money, and they <laughs> they didn't even keep Chris Stapps. Like, it's fine. It's over. Um, but like we, we we didn't just win the battles, bro. We we swept the war. We this was like you know like uh, you know Rome and Carthage fought three wars, and at the end of it, Carthage didn't exist anymore. Like the Knicks have won every war against 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 the uh, against the Mavericks. It's it's over. It's fine. Point, point taken. Point taken. I just don't know what the hell you just said. There you go. <laughs> Learn history, Con. Learn history. Yeah. Um. Yeah, like, uh, but I will say, like, I think their management in the last year, they've done a good job, man. Like, that team is, they're dangerous. I would not want to play them in that conference right now. Um, personally, I think that they are, I think they're the most likely team to give Denver a run for their money in the conference. I don't really feel great about any other team challenging them. I will say the Lakers, are, like, they've been really good since they put Hachimura into the starting lineup. So they're definitely a team to watch also. But I just, I don't know, man, d as a key player, I just I just can't get there. Maybe that's, I'm wrong. Maybe this is it. But that's another guy who left the Wizards and like found his role on a potential contender. Like they yeah. just they bleed talent, man. They just I mean they they had such terrible management for so long. Yeah. I do think this new group has a much better idea of what they're doing. I know that the Jordan Poole trade obviously doesn't look great. I don't really I still don't mind that though. They just took a shot on a guy that they could basically get for free. It doesn't matter to them. He sucks. They need to pay. They have to have somebody on the, on the on the books. You know, we already know cap space is not anywhere near as valuable as it used to be. Um, but like, yeah, I mean, I, I haven't. I'm anybody that's you know claiming to have been crunching Wizards tape is lying to you. But like, apparently, <laughs> Denny has been playing a lot better uh, to close yeah. the season. His contract is pretty nice. So like, we'll see. I mean, they've got a long way to go, but hopefully, their management is a lot better than it's been because. I mean, they've been down for a while. I, I don't think they've they've never made the conference. They haven't made the conference finals since they won the fi the championship in like 1972 or whatever, which is bananas to me. Yeah. Um, that's that's disgusting. Yeah, that's. I think they've only won. I think they've only won one playoff series in that time. I think. I I, I, I have no idea. I'm pretty sure that's true. Um, <laughs> SVG said it best. Injuries go away when the ball finds you. That was actually he, he was, dude. He was cooking today. That Tatum thing. He was just like Yo, not Tatum tirade. Oh my <laughs> god. He, he he was like on the verge of just calling him a bitch. <laughs> he was really upset about that. He was just like he's like yeah, you know Tatum's upset. He's he seems to always be upset uh, at the refs nowadays. But that the one he got upset about was bullshit. He didn't get touched on it. It was crazy. Nah, I didn't... That was nuts. Um. That was wild superstar five better than isaiah and this from nemo teeter nemo hope you're doing well buddy uh ne superstar five better than isaiah next season wemby and white hartenstein is the only uh five i'm not sure exactly where you're going with this uh but i'm assuming to say um yeah he like I, it's so funny he said later that he he messed up the spelling he said his keyboard yeah. was like fucked yeah. up yeah it's, it's not a big deal but um dude wemby like i actually keep forgetting that wemby is a five and exists, but like, yeah, he's obvious. I would, I would consider trading Hartenstein for Wemby. I, I would probably consider that. I don't know. It'd be, it'd be uh, hard, but I think I'd, I'd roll the dice. No, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. Uh, <laughs> Omar Yusuf, Rob not over, but we still hungry. Let's fucking go. <laughs> yes, uh, Eid Mubarak uh, to uh, yes. all who participate in Ramadan. Congrats to you guys for making it through the month. I know I would never be able to do that shit. I could never do it. I not would not be possible. Uh, Dude, so salute to you for doing it. My family asked me 
because like for Lent, I'm not supposed to eat meat for 40 days, which is yeah, very un right. un very unpatriotic. Yeah. Did but, you laugh? <laughs> yeah. So so I was like, okay, I'm not doing that. And they were like, all right, can you just like pick two days out of the week to like not eat meat and like and like you, like we'll let you go, like you'll be cool. And I was like, no. <laughs> Like, I, I promise i'll pick i'll pick two days of the week to to not smoke weed how about that yeah be <laughs> <that? laughs> the, the least bit serious bro like come on <laughs> um, um yeah. I, okay, I wanted to put this up sorry, oh, sorry i'm gonna go 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 put this up from jordan jalen brunson right now is the 53rd highest player in the nba um next season before free agency even starts in the upcoming season or whatever He's going to be the 56th highest paid next year. And some of the guys in his tax bracket, Terry Rozier, Draymond Green, Aaron Gordon, Cameron Johnson, Kyle Kuzma, Mikhail Bridges, Bruce Brown, Brick Lopez, Jan McDaniels, Malcolm Brogdon, Clint Capella, Dylan Brooks, DeAndre Hunter, Marcus Smart, um, and the list can go on. John Collins, Andrew Wiggins, but I'm not going to sit here and just do that for the whole um, post game. So, yeah, just wow. Yeah. Um it's pretty amazing. Wanna be fashion model on heat sacrifice tire heroes is really good. Um <laughs> Sean, Sean, I'm um, shout out Tibbs for putting Dante on KP and it actually worked. Yeah, I thought that was good. That was a good, good, good move from Tibbs. Good eye uh from you, Sean. Yeah, that was that was a definitely a good move. And it was, you know, it was interesting, like it was kind of cool to see the matchups. And and I actually like I, I will say this. I think it was a mistake for the Celtics to to put any of those guys on the floor tonight. Um, not because like the injury stuff, because I always think that's like fans just get really stupid about that. Um, I'm not even about the injury risk, but like you kind of gave the Knicks an idea of what you might do against them, what the match they had be. nothing to gain from yeah, they from had nothing, they, they had nothing to gain, and and like we saw what they tried to do, right? They they put Kristaps, um, they didn't have him on Hartenstein, they put Drew on Hartenstein initially, uh, they had Kristaps on Josh Hart, right? So Josh, because they want Josh Hart to shoot. That's what they're trying to do. Um, but like the Knicks know that now. You gave them that. I, why you would do that, I don't know. But I know Tibbs is psychotic and uh, has married that psych psychosis uh, with uh, a newfound flexibility and adaptability as a head coach. Um, he's going to remember that. And if they face the Celtics on the line, they'll be more prepared and than they were maybe initially to start this game. Not that they came out bad or anything, but um, I, I I thought it, I think it was a mistake. I thought it was a big mistake for them to play and and definitely to play as much as they did. Uh, Hawkeye four twenty that Drew contract going to age like the stinkiest of milk. That contract is it's definitely something. It's a contract. It is. It is one of the contracts in the NBA. <laughs> it certainly is binding. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Neil Petiter, uh, I need Jeremy to detail us on how the Celtics got to explode next season for money reasons. I'm sure Jeremy is furiously uh, in his spreadsheets uh, concocting exactly that plan for you, Nemo. So don't worry about it. Hawkeye for 2065, you degenerates in here, hit that like and subscribe, ring that notification bell. Yeah, please. Yes, please do. If you have not done so already, that'd be a huge help. Uh, good path, friend of the pod, Zach, GM. Good morning. And fuck Boston. Yes. I can not, not, I not a friend. A not great a friend. friend. Yeah. Uh, an acquaintance of the pod. Uh, <laughs> fuck, for 20 The discount guard. <laughs> <laughs> Saw the superior JB cook under bright lights. Meanwhile, Jalen Brown missed open dunks. That was so funny when he missed that dunk, man. Cause just because he was trying so hard in that third quarter, it was so funny to watch that shit. I'm like, dude, relax. Like, we get it. You're, you, you want everybody to know that you're trying very hard. We get it. Him, Obi. Who else has? There's there's another guy who missed an open dunk. Oh, um, just just now, Dale and Terry, and Andre Drummond. They both missed an open dunk because they guarded mm. each other. So that was no, not Dale and Terry. Um, Craig, Tory Craig, Tory Craig, Tory Craig. Okay, yeah, yeah. they're they're the same player. Yeah. Uh, Nafimul Huda. This Celtics team reminds me more of those CP3 Harden Rockets. That's an interesting. Com that's an interesting comparison, and I kind of I I get that because they're very very three point dependent. That was one of the issues with the uh, the chat GPT style of basketball that the Houston Rockets played as well. Um, but yes, like it, it's 
it is very robotic and it's fine. Like obviously we know most teams play, they hunt for threes, right? They, and, and not most teams, basically every team in the NBA at this point hunts for threes and hunts for shots at the rim, which is all that's good. That's, that's, that's what the math is telling you to do. What you need are players though, who, when all that stuff is shut down can create and, and, and make the best of adverse situations. And I do think that as good as the talent, the collection of talent Boston has is I still don't really love those guys to create offense in tough spots, um, mid range, whatever. Like I, 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 I don't know. I, I, I do like that comparison though. Nafi, um, that's a good one. Oh, Zach, we saw the video. Thank you. Yes. Uh, here we go. Uh, Spencer Brunson is a master of the dark arts. Simon Windorch is a master of diet and exercise. <laughs> okay, can I can I be honest? For somebody who's seven four, I think Wumby's pretty yoked. Pause. You think but so? Like, for somebody who's seven four, dude, at nineteen years old. I mean, I, I have no problem. I think he's. I mean, he, to me, he's like where I kind of expected him to be. Like. I don't know. That that guy is way bigger than Porzingis was, and he's also two inches taller. Can Harrison Barnes hit some three-point shots, man? All right. <laughs> Whatever. All right. Uh, Chris Berner, I've said a lot. The Bulls deserve their fate once they acquired DeMar DeRozan. He's a bum, foul baiter, choker, and LeBron's bitch. <laughs> that LeBron shit that he said was so ridiculous, man. Okay, Dude. we were talking about this on our pod the other day uh, that we dropped today, the uh, the Strickland Awards. Mm -hmm. But like, dude, that comment he had where he's basically like Sam brought this up. He's basically was like, if we had LeBron, we would, you know, we'd win this series. So it's like, bro, you're playing the dude right now in this series. <laughs> it's are not you, over, man. Yeah, are, you, are you kidding me? Like, that's crazy. <laughs> just, just a, just a crazy, crazy comment. <laughs> Um, sorry, I wanted to bring this up. Uh, where is it? Ananobi, this from Jordan above. Ananobi Hartenstein played 2105, 21 minutes, five seconds time versus Boston. The Knicks had a defensive rating of 78.6 in those minutes while outscoring Boston 53 to 33. Dude, they're Ananobi, like Hartenstein's been obviously awesome defensively all year. Um, Ananobi like amplifies that to a ridiculous degree. Um, it, it's Crazy. By the way, I just saw Zion make a jump shot for like the first time in his entire career in the NBA. It's impressive stuff. He just doesn't even like he he doesn't even attempt threes ever now. It's very weird, man. Um, I don't know. He's the weirdest player. Yeah, I feel like I genuinely have watched him play like five games in the NBA, which is probably true because he's only been healthy for like five games in the NBA. Um. All right, here we go. Uh, Jordan Bubb. Isaiah Hartenstein played 33 minutes tonight. First time he's gone over 30 since before he re-injured the Achilles one two months ago. Important stuff for him with the playoffs around the corner. Yeah, that's that's huge. I didn't realize that he hadn't played 30 at all since then. Um, definitely feel – I mean, I, I think I, I was talking about this after a couple games ago, but, like, he looks he looks like he's right there. Um, he looks sharp, and uh, I think the Knicks have done a really good job managing his minutes and everything. and. Yeah. Quinn, do you remember what, what this was about? Um what how is that a tough choice? I forgot what I was talking about when I when I said that. I have no idea. All right. Well I'm yeah. sure he can let us he'll, he'll let us know. Yeah. Uh Stanley Man, Zach Levine contract is untradeable. Yeah, that contract is just garbage. One of the worst. <laughs> Ace Bishard and Step is my favorite landlord. <laughs> <laughs> and he said slumlord. Um Omar Yusuf, Tatum was so great tonight because he ran to the corner and deferred to Bronson. <laughs> oh, man. Um, <laughs> I, was I was about to put that up. I was about to say that. Yeah. Shwin, did you text your dad about this win yet? Did your dad consider this a charity game for the Celtics too? Um, my dad has just become like increasingly unreasonable about, about the Celtics year and like not in the way you would expect where he's like gloating. He like hates that they're resting players at all. He's been like bitching about this all year. He's like, how can they get into a rhythm? I'm like, you've won fucking 61 games. Feels like they're in front of a good rhythm, man. Like, I don't know what to tell you. He's just a very, I think if they don't win the championship this year, I think he's probably, 
he's he be broken. Man. Yeah, he it's he's just like he he hates he hates how they play. He hates it. Like he hates that they just like hunt threes constantly. He hates all of that so much. Um, and I I do and I I think he doesn't. I I don't I don't think he likes um, Tatum very much. I don't think that's his like his favorite franchise player. It's like it's like you know he's like uh, he's no Larry Bird. I'm like okay, <laughs> like <laughs> what's okay? Like yeah, I I agree. Like. <laughs> What do you want me to say? The, the funniest thing to me is like when old people are like, oh, yeah, but this guy's like not Bill Russell. It's like, <laughs> okay. Yeah. You know, like can... if, you, if you were like saying this right now about Bill Russell, like during his fifth season, Bill Russell wouldn't be Bill Russell either at that time because like that's not how it works. Like players prove themselves as time goes on. They add accolades, all that stuff. So like. I, what's what's your point? But I, I digress. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Derek Rose, he's not Michael Jordan. Like, all no, right, no. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. You got it. <laughs> that, that's like that's like Mavericks fans. They're like, oh, you know, Harrison Barnes for three. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> that's like Mavericks fans being like, oh, Jalen Brunson like didn't win the title in 2016 with LeBron. Like, okay, he was in college. <laughs> Jordan Bub, highest individual plus minus in 2024. This is crazy. Jalen Brunson plus 445. Nikola Jokic plus 379. Jason Tatum plus 378. Yeah, Brunson is – he's playing like the level the, – I think what makes it hard for non-Knicks fans to understand is like – I don't think to start this season, right, for like the first three months, we all obviously still love Brunson. Not only really any of us was arguing, like, oh, Brunson is, you know, is he a top five player or is he – an MVP like is he playing like the best he wasn't at that level at that point but like in the last three months basically since since they got OG since that point and especially obviously since OG and Randall went down he is playing at that level and he is playing at a level where like I honestly am like I don't know dude like if I needed a bucket like if, I, if I had if I if I knew I just needed a guy to give me 45 50 in a game in the playoffs, I would probably bet on Brunson doing that over Giannis. Not probably, I would. Like, I think he's a better scorer. He's a flat-out more dominant offensive player right now. And I don't know. That's like, it's kind of, I still don't, I like, when I, just, when I say that, yeah, I'm just talking about scoring, but, like, an offense in general. But, like, when I say that, I, like, I believe it. But then I say it and I like think about it. I'm like, is that insane? Like, am I am I just being insane? But I don't think I am. I don't know. It's a crazy thing to think about. Depends, uh depends who you ask. Because if you ask a Heat fan, it's Jimmy Butler. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Citizen X, we're getting to the responses to my mellow rant portion of the comments. This is my favorite portion here. Citizen X, mellow killed us. <laughs> also. Just threw this in there. So did Bear, Bear last <laughs> oh, I love this dude. What about Barrett? He sucks. <laughs> just, just fucking killing RJ. Hey, honestly, RJ was not great for us. We know that. At least he's been better for Toronto. Looks like he's found a better place there. But, like, you know, you look at how the Knicks are playing now, and I think um, Ace Bouchard did a thread uh, for Knicks Film School after the last game, after the Bulls game. And he kind of talked about how, like, the way we're playing now with all this motion and, and all this stuff, um, like, it's great. Like, it, it requires a high level of feel and intelligence and, and basketball IQ from the players on the floor. And I'm not saying, like, RJ is a stupid player, but he's not a quick decision maker. And he wasn't particularly great moving off the ball unless it was to move to get the ball to score. Um, and, you know, you see, like, it, I don't I don't think OG, you know, his ceiling or whatever you fucking want to call it offensively is necessarily what RJ's ceiling could be, especially if what he's doing in Toronto right now holds up. Um I'm not under the floor, but like I don't think it matters because the way we're playing, I would much rather have OG. I just would. Like it, it even on both ends of the floor is kind of my point. Um it's, it's pretty special, man. Um uh, yeah. Yes, uh, Larry Israel. I didn't want to get into my uh, my RJ hate. 
I, just, I, I, yeah, I don't, I, I don't, I, I don't like to shit on RJ just because I'm like, I don't know, I don't know how to explain it. I'm just like, end of the day, he was like a guy we drafted third overall. I hope for the best with him. It didn't happen. That's not and who he, I want to be. Like, and he, he, he also he left it like he left exactly when it was like obvious it was not going to happen for him here. Yeah, like those last two games for him, that OKC game and the Magic game. Game, oh god, the Magic game. Dude, I wanted to fucking like shoot myself watching him. I was like, is this like this is it? Like for four and a half years in, this is this is it? Like this is what we're getting? Like so he left at the perfect time. So I can just remember the fun moments and and uh, stretches he gave us, and I don't have to worry about the rest. And also the fact that the trade worked out great for us. Yeah. Wonderful. I, I wonder uh, if the games were a product of him knowing that he was on the way out, but I just think he had given up. I think he was not happy with his role and that's what it was. I, I, I yeah, it's one of those two. Yeah. Larry Israel, Mer Mello never recruited anyone. In fact, he refused to do it. He never considered any way he could help make the team better. In fact, he actively counseled young pl players to question the organization. This is true. This is true. He told Porzingis to do this and other young players. Um, he was just, you know, if I think the way it works in the NBA, your top players to some degree, you can't treat them as just a management dictating down to employees, right? Like we know star players have a lot more agency in the NBA than that. They have to be partners to some degree and you have to treat them as such, but then they have to hold up their end of the bargain. And I think the point Larry is making here is that Mello was an, a, a bad partner. Uh, and we certainly know that he was an unfaithful one. <laughs> If I was sitting next to you, I'd dap you up right now. <laughs> Larry Israel, uh, no Nick fan over 35 would want Mello's jersey retired. Yes, I agree. That's yes. my dad doesn't want his jersey retired either, so you might be right. <laughs> I I can't imagine why. Uh Nick's tape, Stan was cooking. He also said he called for Jalen MVP and Tibbs Coach of the Year. I agree, man. Uh Stan was on it today. I don't know what happened. He was like he was, he was showing the Knicks a lot of love, Bro. and he was shitting on Tatum. It was wonderful. Isn't I it? was listening to this broadcast, and I was like, do you want to do the playoff games? <laughs> like, please? <laughs> like, we, need to, we need to get him on Tibbs' staff, bro. Let's, let's, get, let's do that. Dude, he, I don't even consider that. He's, he's fucking trying so hard to get a new job right now. I mean, they've coached together. They coached together uh, in New York, I'm pretty sure. They were both on the staff with Pat Riley, if I remember correctly. Um, <clears throat> hey, look at this. Jason Arvalo. My grandma told me it was okay to eat meat during Lent if you pray for forgiveness. That's all you got to do. You're good to go. <laughs> Let's go. Thank you, Jason. I, I needed that. That I needed that reassurance in my life. Thank you. Uh, yeah, this was a good point. This is a good comment he made. Uh, I'm not sure anyone has carried a bigger burden for their team than Jalen Brunson has, yeah. and he's really come through. Stan Van Gundy, who has Brunson in his top five MVP candidates. Yeah, I mean, look, you're, I think you're seeing more of these national guys starting to like talk about Brunson as a top five MVP guy, and and obviously if you're a top five MVP guy, they start they're now talking about him. Hey, maybe he should be first team All NBA. Maybe he deserves it. I think I heard Bon Taps on with Low this week, and he was saying like. He basically is choosing between six people for first team All NBA, uh, and I think for him the final choice was between Brunson and Tatum. Kind of wonder if tonight he's like, yeah, fuck it, I'm going Brunson. <laughs> uh, what will happen first? The Bills not choking in a, a Super Bowl, Jets playing up to their ability, Knicks winning a title, or Jalen Brown dribbling constantly with his left hand? Um, in order of sure. in order of things, I would prefer. I think. I would I I want want the Knicks to win a title first. I would then want the Bills to not choke a Super Bowl, okay. uh, and then I will take the Jets playing up to their ability, and then I will take Jalen Brown being able to dribble constantly with his left hand. By the way, this is a good point. the The one possession where I think Brunson ended up drawing a charge uh, on him in the first quarter, Brunson was just sitting on his right hand. He would not let him go to his right. And Brown couldn't he, – he just was fumbling around. He couldn't get anywhere. So it's pretty good. Good eye. Good eye. The the one I'd toss into there is will the Giants move off Daniel Jones before those happen? Will the Giants ever replace Eli Manning? That's really the question here. 
Can they? In your heart, you know? Oh, no, that that they can't. <laughs> no. You're always rolling with Eli no matter what? Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know if you re- I don't know if you remember you might not remember this, but that second Super Bowl they won. Um, I don't know why, but that year, like so Dion used to be on NFL Network. And actually, honestly, their show on NFL Network with like him and Irvin and and a couple other guys, like that was it was all Eisen was on it. It was like awesome. I used to watch that all the time after like the football, right? Because you get the highlights and whatever. Um after the know, football. Yeah, after the football. Uh, but like <laughs> But, like, I don't know why, but that year he was, like, the biggest Eli homer. Like, he just, like, loved Eli that year. So every time they'd, like, play a Giants highlight or something, he'd always do this thing where he'd be like, I believe in Eli! I believe in Eli! Like, he just he said it all the way through the year. Um, but, yeah, I mean, like, he actually looked like a genius there because that's – I mean, what I think that, that that was the second the second Super Bowl the Giants won. Um but that's like, I mean, that's like a criminally underrated quarterback season, honestly. Like, their offensive line was dog shit. And the defense was terrible until like the last few weeks of the season, basically. No, actually, you know, the defense played a good game in the Super Bowl, so he got carried. <laughs> I don't, that's that's Stacy in the chat? I don't, I, no, it, it's, it's, not, it's not just Stacy. It, it's, it's Twitter, and it's, uh, I went to I went to Pennsylvania for a Spartan race one time, and I wore a Giants jersey out there just because I was like, "Fuck it, what are you gonna do?" <laughs> and and, they were, and I uh, I went to a restaurant. They were like, "Yo, you know Eli's like not that good." I was like, "Okay, you watch fucking Jalen Hurts every Sunday." <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> Omar Yusuf, we are not also going to overrate Wemby's muscle mask. <laughs> Sorry, Hawkeye guy for twenty con got the same sickness as Sam now. <laughs> I do, I do, I do. I, I, I cashed one time and I, and then I put three more. Like, I, I, I bet on Trey Lyles. Like, it's bad. It's bad. <laughs> I, I got hooked already. It's bad. Uh, Judah Bencher, now showing the other night. I think the Suns Zion had like three, four straight minis. Good for him, man. He needs to start taking those shots because, like. They give it to him. Well, not just that. Like, dude, at the end of the day, we all know, like, when you go to the playoffs, teams prepare differently. And they yeah. are – you're not going to get the shots that you always want. You cannot just be, like, I only score at the rim. Like, like even Giannis couldn't do that. You know what I mean? Like, when they won the championship, he was hitting mid- middies. Yeah. Um, it's not possible. Like, unless you're Shaq. Shaq is the uh, exception to the rule. But, like – and, like, as dominant as Zion is physically, like, he, he's, he's, he can't do that. You've got to be able to make some some jumpers. Um. This is really funny. Next tape, Schwinn, your dad knows ball. Hawkeye for 20. Your dad knows ball. <laughs> <laughs> Next tape, hates the Celtics and how they play and hates Tatum. Uh, yeah, it's actually really funny. He's like probably the one Celtics fan. Um, yeah. Schwinn's dad is real for the Celtics strategy in the Tatum tape. I'll let him know that uh, all the Knicks fans agree with him on uh, on how he feels about the Celtics. <laughs> Jordan Bub, most points versus Boston. 30 minutes or less. 41, Richie Guerin in St. Louis, February 3rd, 1967. 39, Paul Westfall, Phoenix, March 4th, 1979. 39 for Jalen Brunson tonight. Um, yeah, man, he, he, he fried him tonight. It was That was special. Um, <laughs> Chris Bird. Is Citizen X actually Tyrese's Bird account? <laughs> oh, man. Larry Israel, year three, Bill Russell averaged 16 and 23 and then won 18 consecutive playoff series. That's fucking crazy. That's not like, like, yes, that's not what I was going for with the comparison. Like, like I chose the wrong fucking guy. I, I know. I know I did. I fucked up. I fucked up. I chose the only guy who won fucking 12 rings. Like, yeah. Literally won like 11. Of course. Of course. I he have can't. To- he, he has a spare one. Like he has a spare one. It's just like, that's so crazy. Uh, Aaron Bender, if Giannis were on the Knicks, Brunson would still be the closer. I agree. I mean, that's that's a hundred percent. That's just a fact. I, I don't. I don't even know. That's not a hot take at all. Uh, Hawkeye four twenty. I think the RJ slander is a bit much, but it can't be denied that he never lived it up to third overall status scheme or not. It just didn't work out tragically. Um, yeah, man, it it definitely sucks. So, um, yeah, yeah. I, I, I I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. I'm not going to expunge on this topic. 
yeah it just it's it's just honestly the only the thing that really burns me is that like if he had been closer to living up to what we were hoping we could probably keep quickly in that trade um and even if like they were going to move quickly anyway because they didn't want to pay him his contract you could have used him in a more productive trade um or you could have used him in an additional trade maybe you keep grimes maybe you package grimes and you know whatever there's all kinds of hypotheticals you walk down ultimately what we can say is the Knicks found a way to utilize RJ in a trade that has proven to be very, very um, good for the Knicks. Yeah. Uh, Chris Bernard, can we hire SVG so we can do color? <laughs> when Clyde decides to be at his restaurant half a season instead of Alan Hahn and Wally, not a Knicks or Piac. Unfortunately, Clyde's restaurant is closed. It has shut down. That was from a while ago, right? Like oh. a couple years ago, I think. Yeah, yeah, he, he. I think it was it. It was maybe during COVID. The COVID year, I thought it was. Yeah, okay. it was around that. I think. Um, Sadu Berry, he he. Let's go Knicks. Yes, I agree, sir. by I Like that. I agree. That's exactly the energy that I'm talking about. Sadu, let's let's get it. Here we go. Nothing less than a championship game. Yes, I go. And then we got <laughs> Knicks World with the Mets Apple. Let's go Mets, and then. Praying hands, yes, sir. Yeah. Praying for a title, um, like I'm praying for forgiveness. Fuck you, Luca. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the adventure says, Schwinn, somehow your sniffs hit different with your mic. Uh, hey, I'll take it. I'll take it. Do do uh, not. No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, Daniel Jones is mentoring Bo Nicks for the next few years. Accept your fate. Enjoy your D line getting 150 sacks combined. Hey, at least you have that to look forward to. I, I will. I will appreciate that, and I and I think I deserve that for watching. The quarterback room that we have yeah uh <laughs> next day eli's gang hawkeye four is up the losing recipes here schwinn yeah i'm pretty i'm almost positive that was uh chris Burner has yeah this was the this is the crew rich eisen primetime sap and Irvin were a goaded crew that crew had the we were losing recipes cool. oh right. that's what that was okay. yeah <laughs> okay. okay uh larry's standing tips number coach guy that was jeff van gundy and nick stuff yeah i just assumed that stan was on that staff for some reason but either way, I'm sure they have, like, it seems like, I mean, look, if, I'm assuming Stan is not Aaron Rodgers and does talk to his family. Um, so <laughs> I'm sure that he knows enough about Tibbs uh, from Jeff. So uh, <laughs> this is good. I got 420. <laughs> the defense made that throw to Manny. <laughs> yeah, he did. He did, actually. And, and the defense also, you know, did everything else in Eli's career. The defense – let him get out of that sack to then throw the ball to David Tyree and, <laughs> and the defense, you know, through the pass to, uh, to Plexico burst to win the game. The defense did that as well. And, uh, you know, the defense blocked for him too. the defense ran the ball. Like the defense, just the defense, you know, it did yeah. defense things all game. Yeah. Thank I you. Agree. Defense. Yes. Uh, looking hate you by haters. Okay. You, you can you, you can you answer hate, this. This this is a good this is a good football question for you. Shwin, Shwin, before we get into this, if you hate Eli Manning, you don't love winning enough. If you if you hate Eli Manning, you got picked last in recess, and it's not my fault. Eli Manning is a winner, and Jets fans who hate on him especially are just mad they don't have a winner to look up to like Eli Manning. Sorry. <laughs> it's it's it is actually hilarious. The amount of quarterbacks that Eli has more Super Bowls than. Like, genuinely hilarious some of the guys he has more Super Bowls than. There, there's some guys who I won't toss out, like, the he's not a winner thing. But, like, people will say, like, oh, Philip Rivers is better than him. I'm like, fuck? Be real. Be fucking serious. And I actually like Philip Rivers. But, like, can we be serious? Like, can we be serious? The only thing Philip Rivers is better at than Eli is having a shit ton of kids. Yeah, That's just the only thing. impregnating his wife. That's um, uh, I, we should still believe in Aziz because he's been hurt, and being hurt doesn't mean you're bad. That is the number one thing with football. Guys get hurt, man. Like it's the most physical sport in the world. But if you want to toss in rugby, be my guest. I don't care. Um, but it's the most physical sport, at least in North America. We'll say that. And he has everything you still need to be an effective edge player, from the bend to the technique. Um, he, he can hold up in the run, and I think similar to Kayvon, um, and you know the kind of 
production that we're looking for with him, like that uptick with Shane Bowen and this uh, defensive scheme, you could look for similar things with Aziz. And I think with Aziz, Brian Burns, and Kayvon, as much as I love a guy like Chad Robinson in the second round, who I was texting about with Luca today, um, I don't see that as a fit, but hey, you can never have enough pass rushers. So, yeah, I, I still believe in Kayvon. Yeah, uh, just, ask Joe, just ask Joe Douglas. Um, yeah. JK, you talked to your co-host Jeff about – this is from JK, sorry. You talked to your co-host Jeff about Kawhi or Brunson in his first team yet. I actually had no idea that he had picked Brun- Kawhi over Brunson. And I, I have not – so I have not talked to him about that. I will put this on the record. I think that's crazy. I think that is fucking crazy. And I and love Kawhi. Quinn is a crazy Kawhi fan too. I, I love Kawhi. Like that is fucking bananas. Like if you if you want to say in a vacuum, you would still take, you know, Kawhi healthy in a playoff series over Brunson. I don't think that's crazy because I think Kawhi is – I mean, he's not – I think he is one of the all-time playoff risers. His like percentages actually go up in the playoffs. We obviously know what he's done in San Antonio and Toronto. Um, the last time we saw him in the playoffs for real, like he, he, he won the one game last year. He played in the playoffs against the Suns, And then he literally was like, Oh, by the way, uh, I'm out for the season now. Just kidding. We're done. Um, but like the last time we saw him have an extended run was when they got to the Western conference finals and he was awesome. And it, he didn't play, uh, he didn't close out the series against Utah in the second round, but they were two, two. He looked like he was about to go on his, you know, standard uh, classic Kawhi run type shit, but he was awesome. And that's the last time we saw him in the playoffs, but I'm sorry. Like you have to adjust for the context. You have to adjust for what Brunson has had to elevate and deal with and, and all of that. And there is just simply, and, and the minutes, the minutes played and all like, I'm sorry. Like I, I, I just can't get there at all. I, I, I think it, it'd be an insult to Jalen Brunson if Kawhi fucking Leonard made the first team All-NBA team over him this year. That would be an insult to him, to what he's done this year. Um, he's also, I, I've noticed that uh, once he signed his extension, as Omar has pointed out in our Discord previously, all of a sudden uh, he has started missing some games since then. So uh, congrats to Kawhi on continuing <laughs> to get the bag. I respect it. Um, yeah. <laughs> Um, this is this is just the, all the energy that I've ever wanted. In my- <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who this. I don't know if he's been here before. Every comment is just fucking. Unfair. Electric, electric. Yeah. You are the rock of this comment section. You are the most electrifying man in comment section entertainment. Sadu Barry, Eli Manning is Brunson twenty twenty four, underrated big time champs. Both Eli, uh, champs both. Eli beat your goat quarterback twice. You're just spot on, bro. You're you're, you're, you're talking my language. You 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 damn right. This is this is this is funny, Jordan. But we got booed at the end for a reason. This is not the team our fans love. Kristaps Porzingis talks Celtics not being able to turn things up against Knicks with their playoffs really secured. I will say one thing. He is right. Uh, that is not the team that Celtics fans love. The team that Celtics fans loved was on display in the fourth quarter where they had like four white guys on the floor. They love that. <laughs> That's the team that the fucking Celtics fans love. Um, and true, true Americans too. You know, Peyton Pritchard, Luke Cornett. Peyton yeah. Pritchard, especially. Yeah. Money. He's got the, he's got the, he's got the right haircut, right? You know, Peyton Pritchard's yeah. got the right look for them. So. And he hit on his overs today. So yes. Yeah. Yes. But all right. We're going to end it here. Uh, we're going to two hours now. Appreciate everybody in the comments. Uh, appreciate all your support. Obviously, you guys uh, make it possible for us to do this. And, uh, yeah, everything that happens, every, everything we produce is uh, hopefully it's, it is for you guys. And hopefully you continue to enjoy it. Um, shout out, So, again, shout out to everybody in there. Uh, if you have not done, if you've not subscribed to the channel yet, please do so. That would be a huge help. Like the video leave comment all that type of stuff that is our show for today uh i hope everybody has a great night uh I, me and prez will be recording the pod tomorrow morning so that'll probably hopefully come out at some point during the afternoon or something um i'll obviously tweet it out and let everybody know what it does um but all right yeah that's that is our show um and uh yeah take care 
Have a good night. Yeah, good Peace. Time.